I'm going to turn the mic up. Hey, can you guys on Discord hear me too? Uh, oh, I am a person. Uh, wow, you're I'll really right loud. Back. Why is the mic so, the camera is like right in my face? Welcome to Courtesy Flush. I'm gonna be over here so you guys can't see my face. Oh, uh, why is the camera like it's like right in my fucking face? Wow. Anyway, tonight we're gonna be playing Star Trek. The end. Now people are Have gonna a good comment on your pores because <laughs> you're so close to that fucking camera. It's my pores are pretty clogged. Not gonna lie, I wash my face probably about once a month. Um, Ew. All right. So here's here's what we're <laughs> gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna say this to everyone out there who is watching. Mm -hmm. Um, thank you for watching. I have 14 people. Hello. Howdy. Well, it's 18 people on YouTube, and it's how many? Five people? on Twitch. Twitch. Well, it just started. These are the people that matter, man. All right. Yeah, these, the people who, yeah, these, these are the people who matter. Hey, and if I see if I see writers saying "wonderful evening, everyone," then I know the stream is ready to go. That's how All it right, usually yeah. works. Why didn't you upload the subscriber icon yet? Re. I did. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, so here's here's the thing. How Everyone I... who wants to give Mike yeah. money, Mike will take the money. I won't. Uh, be it. So, yeah. If, Where are if, they going to give the money to? Give because Mike the... money, give, give Mike money, don't know. No. And show because... off your mug. I am. See, Where's his there it PayPal? Is. Tex made Where's that. It? I don't talk like this. It's just how what he wrote. And I don't say stuff. I'm not mean. Who the hell is you should, Mark? You should send him a picture of a mug I got you. Because yeah, that's, the that's mug, how we got married. The mug Mike got me says butter hot. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I died laughing when I got it. I had a really bad day at work, and that really made my so wait, I appreciate wait. it. I did upload the emote. I don't know why it's not working. Anyway, um, Mark the editor. Cool. Thank you, not person that I know. Um, it's me. I, yeah, I, I, give I give Mike the editor money through the. <laughs> it's YouTube funny because I used to have a, uh, I used to have a, a a lady who lived next door. This like grandma type lady. She'd walk her dog up and down the street. And she'd talk to everyone on the street, and she'd be like, "Hey, Mark, what's up, Mark?" And I told her my name is Mike like a thousand times, but she's like that character in a story that just doesn't get your name right. But she comes by with like wisdom and sandwiches. I, that was literally the highlight of living in that neighborhood. Um, and she's still there. I saw her the other, uh, saw her a couple weeks ago. Anyway, uh, so last time we left off on Star Trek, uh, the crew of the Esses, uh, had completed, the, well, they didn't really complete their mission, but they've done better than that. They have captured an enemy vessel. Um, unfortunately, they have lost a crewman, and right now, uh, on their way to the star base where they're going to be debriefed and most likely I'm back. face an inquiry, um, Tex has the uh, the captain's duty of reading the last rites of our good old friend, the the pasta man himself. Uh, I have the last rites here for you. You can read them. I'm gonna put. I was gonna say last words weren't his last words. Is that store brand marinara? No, he wrote he wrote a will, and as captain, you get to you get to say this to the whole crew. So oh. yeah, I sent it to you, and I'm gonna go ahead and let me know when you're ready, and I will get you started on that. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm reading this. Um, the captain is dressed in his uh, Class A dress uniform, and he's got a uh, nice big cigar, and he's got his whiskey, you know? Yeah. All right, so do you want to go ahead and hit that on the PA? Yeah. Um, I, 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 I want... Thank you. Uh, I was, was going to say, uh, this is your captain oh, speaking. Go to the game window. Sorry, you guys are looking right there. Yeah? There we go. This is your captain speaking... In our last brave engagement, we lost a crewman. It was that Italian guy. You know, the guy that made fettuccine in his spare time? The guy that was kind of weird. Pretty greasy guy. Anyways, we're about to shoot him out into space in a torpedo. and uh, He has his last will and testament, which I'm, I'm, I'm going to read here. Hold on. Uh, let me take... And he takes out like a crinkled piece of paper out of his pocket. <laughs> like written on receipts <laughs> yeah it's like on a cvs receipt <laughs> um he says i palladio senatore enlisted crewman of starfleet being s of sound mind and memory do hereby make publish and declare this to be my last will and testament 
I am unwed and with no parentheses legitimate in parentheses children. <laughs> I hereby name, constitute, and appoint. You can come up. And then he. Yeah. 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 So he zooms in on it and he goes, uh, Grekek? As my personal representative to administer my estate. I authorize my personal representative to administer my estate independently without adjudication, order, or direction of any court. I direct my personal representative to pay all the expenses of my last illness, burial, and funeral expenses as soon as practicable on my death. My mortal remains are to be buried in my family plot in Altoilia, Italy, or Sicily, or whatever overlooking the wheat field where I was raised. And he lowers the piece of paper and he's like, fucking peasant. <laughs> and then he raises the piece of paper. To whatever succeeds me as chief cook of S's, I leave any and all surviving personal effects remaining on board, my razor, my cookbook, and my tool. Learn from them and ensure that you and your crew enjoy the fine things of life. The captain nods and takes a sip of his whiskey. <laughs> To the captain, I leave my prize bottle of Lambrusco wine. The captain kind of tears up at this. <laughs> Though the uninitiated may think it cheap and worthless, it is a fine spirit to raise the hearts of men. Qualities I expect you shall continue to uphold. For the commendation... No, 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 that, don't read that part. Don't, the, the, don't read that part. That's, yeah. That was a note for me. I accidentally pasted it. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah, well, hold on. Uh, it, yeah, that that was for that's for something. Yeah, that's for something later on. Don't read that part. <laughs> that was a note for me. <laughs> As DM, my toilet paper. Captain, are you a psychic? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and then um, right over there on the comms, you're getting a comm. Ah, uh, he just he just signed. Oh, is that my job? Hey. <laughs> is that how you I'm, answer the I'm phone? also here. Yeah, are you, is that how you answer? Like, hey, what's up? <laughs> yeah, I'll be like, oh shit, where's the button? <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, what's the button? I don't have pants on. Wait a second. Orion of uh, this ship here. What's up? This is Starbase 11. Uh, you're within range. Uh, please uh, dock at port number four, and I have a message for the captain. All right, pass you through the captain, and I'll just say over to the flights like, uh, I forgot what docking station. <laughs> it's four. <laughs> four. <laughs> I'm 100% sure. This is a message just privately for the captain, so if you want oh, to. Uh, captain, if you'd like to go to your he does toilet. Ready, ready room. It is a toilet. Oh, um. Yeah. Um, I guess there's no ready room on the SS. <laughs> there's a toilet in the ready room. They ran out of space. Yeah, it's you called it the captain's bathroom, but <laughs> yeah, no. All, all right, so so he Someone goes has to and... sit on it every meeting. <laughs> I don't want this toilet. Yeah, so so he goes to his shitter and uh, it's like one of those and... like uh, airliner things where you shut the door and it's like super like you can hear the sounds outside of the room, but you can't hear anything that's going on inside. All right, fine. Okay, so you hit the little button. And uh, a guy comes on. He's like, Horatio, is this you? Yeah. Yeah, this is uh, Commodore Decker. Not that one. Tapped in, by the way. <laughs> That's fine. This is Commodore he, Decker. Not it's so that I one. can edit the logs later. <laughs> not that one. I don't know where that guy went. Anyway, uh, we noticed that you're on your way out here. Captain, I need you to come to my office as soon as you arrive, and uh, I'm going to confine the rest of your crew to quarters. He just kind of sighs, and he's like, what for this time? Well, I think it should be quite clear to you, Captain. You might, you and I both know exactly why they're getting combined to quarters. As for you, well... God damn it. Well, to be honest, we're going to need to have a little chat before we continue on with this. Somewhere a little more not official, if you understand. He just rolls his eyes and he's like, yeah, whatever. All right, then. I'll see you when you get here. Decker out. And then you leave the, the thing, I guess. Or you can sit in there and cry. I don't know what you want to do. <laughs> he, he, he just takes down the select whiskey and he walks out and he goes, Well, looks like we're going to court. 
going to go to shit. Got to go to court. Uh, who are you telling that to? Yeah, the whole bridge crew. Uh, before, like, I already heard it, so I already left the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> just a Ryan. Yeah, the not moment there. he's all like, "We're gonna combine in the courts," I took off towards my quarters. So he can stand up. So, <laughs> so one if of I the, get up, there's a problem. Yeah. So one of the science officers looks over to you and he's like, "Captain, what do you mean we're we're going to court?" He just looks at the guy. Oh God. <laughs> he just looks at the guy. <laughs> Like, just looks at him with hate in his eyes. <laughs> That's perfect. What do you mean, Captain? Why are we going to court? He just points at his eyes. <laughs> and then the then the camera just zooms in on your eyes, and then it shows the ship flying toward the, uh, the space station, and then it begins the, the whole intro sequence. Excellent. See that, see that intro sequence. Space. The final frontier. These are the voyages of the starship Essence. It's our mission to pick up space garbage. Yes, we're garbage men. This is our last chance. If we fuck this up, we're going to prison. So I say fuck it. Never give up. Never surrender. Yeah, now you guys are currently into, so if this had like the title, the little title, it would be called Inquiry, like the little yellow title at the top left. Um, well, way to go to not put it together, people are, people are going to downvote. <sighs> yeah, I totally didn't just do this an hour ago. Anyway, um, <laughs> so as you guys approach the station, you guys uh, arrive at Dock 4. Um, with a loud clank, uh, and with enough, uh, with enough people bitching and complaining, they finally get the doors to the SS pride open and a bunch of security officers come and, uh, seize the ship essentially, but not in like a, an aggressive way, but more like the standard, we need to secure the ship because you guys are just in a war and we don't know what the fuck just happened. So, you know, they're going around and they're also letting your fellow officers know that you guys are going to be confined to quarters on the station. The station is your standard kind of K7 style station. If you guys remember that from the Trouble with Tribbles episode, uh, it's basically what's on the stream right here. Um, and so, you know, you get your basic kind of quarters uh, and any other kind of amenities from like bars to medical facilities to where the captain is going right now, which is the captain or the station commander's office or Commodore office. Um, so, Captain, you're on your way up with a security officer uh, just escorting you from behind. Uh, and you guys are both in the elevator currently. I'm going to get to the rest okay. of you in a moment. This this part is just so the captain can have a chance to uh, figure out what's going on here. So you guys are... Mm. So you're, you're, in a, you're in this with this young-looking security officer, and he goes, Captain's office. Do I? I don't have that sound. <laughs> and he's looking over at you, and he's like, So you're Captain Horatio, huh? He goes, yeah. I heard a lot about you. And he says, uh, about half of that's true. Oh, I feel sorry for the rest. So he's just like, I feel sorry for you a lot. Sounds like you guys did a pretty good job. It's not fair what Starfleet's doing to you. He shrugs and he goes, they ain't over yet, fucko. <laughs> hope, hope so, sir. Hope so. And then the door's... Ding, and then there's a secretary sitting there. Uh, it's a Vulcan secretary lady. And she looks up at you and raises an eyebrow. Captain Horatio? He goes, yeah. The Commodore will see you now. And shows, and like she presses a button on the thing. and. All right. So he, he, he walks in 
in in his uniform with all the weird little medals that they have that are just like <laughs> triangles and and just symbols and there's like no pattern to them, you know. <laughs> I, what's up, what's up about the whoop whoop? Am I oh people are, oh. People are messaging? Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I didn't see that. My bad. Sorry. No, you guys are good. I just needed to see what the. I was just worried something was going around with my computer. You're good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the whoop, 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 yeah. <laughs> I thought I was hitting something on my computer. No. So you walk in and there's uh there's the Commodore just standing there and he turns around and goes, Ah, Captain, it's good to see you, Commodore Decker. As he reaches his hand out and goes, Not that one. And he. He he shakes his hand and he goes, "All right, so is it prison or?" <laughs> oh no, nothing of the sort. You did a pretty good job out there. Uh, whiskey, right? What kind? He just says yes. Hmm. Oh, and he pours you a glass, and it's uh, just your kind of standard Scottish whiskey. And he's just like, "Well, you know, the thing is, to be quite honest, I don't really agree with what they're doing, but." This is standard procedure, after all. You guys were just in a major conflict, and, uh, well, Starfleet's not too happy with the reports that we've been getting. Maybe you can help and clear he, them up. He goes, yeah. Here's the thing. We were sent out on to find garbage. He puts his hand up. Back. He puts his hand up, and he goes, I, save it for the for the person inquiry. I'm just the... No, no. He walks over to him, and he puts his hands on his shoulders, and he goes... We went out for fucking garbage, and we came back with Klingon technology. Captain, I I am on your side on this. I no, understand. he goes, no, no, you're going to say it with me. We went out for garbage, and we came back with what? Captain, as you were. And he, came put, back with your, he, put, he put your hands off of his shoulders and goes, listen, I can't be your friend here if you're going to be argumentative with me. He goes, I am always argumentative. My record will state that. That is very true. <sighs> well, we have somebody from IA coming in, and, uh, well, he's not the kind of person I really like to talk to, and I doubt he's going to like talking to you. So my advice to you is to tell him whatever you can and uh, be as truthful as possible. He, and, he looks nervous at the uh, sense of the word truthful. Um, he he kind of, like, pulls at his collar a bit. He's like, look, uh, you understand there's two kind of Starfleet cap. People who get shit done. and Look. People I, who don't come back. You've been in my position before. You've sat on the space station com uh, commanding, and then you lost that job. And before that, you were, what, commander of the def on the Defiant? That was quite a ship before it got lost. I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. I'm not, too, I'm not entirely sure you're going to be able to walk away from this one. It sounds like Starfleet's gunning for you, so I'm just giving you a fair warning. As one fellow Starfleet captain to another, well, Commodore in this sense... Just be careful. And he, uh, he, he just kind of shrugs and he goes, look, they want to hang me from the yard arm. They're welcome to try. I got two going this time and they'll tear people apart like breadsticks at uh, that ancient Earth Diner. What was its name? That place with all the gang fights. Olive Garden. <laughs> <laughs> he just drinks from his glass. He goes, I'm just going to pretend I didn't hear that. You're dismissed. Can we get the beaming sound? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why are we getting the beaming sound? Because we're all we're all beaming over to the nearest bar on that station. Oh no, you guys are all going to quarters. You're not beaming anywhere. Uh, but like the us. only people who aren't going to quarters by themselves is uh, Grekek and Slar. Is Grekek are they being put in cages where they belong? <laughs> no, actually, they're they're being taken to a a waiting room mainly meant for people who have ambassador status. Yeah, because they are I'm foreign an observers. They're they're foreign observers, so they're not exactly like. Yeah, a, yeah. Orion would not be a former or a foreign observer dick because they're uh, Orion. I'm the only Starfleet. Orion in Starfleet. No, you're not. No, Orions are actually a member of Starfleet. So. Shit. Well, no, most we're most of them. Like history, but... We're high ranking members on the ship. We should be given like some freedom. Well, you guys will be in a minute. Um, you're, as soon as <laughs> I, as soon as you guys are released. Toilet. As soon as you guys are released, then you guys can start plotting. But we're going to start off with uh, our first... Uh, or Hold on one second, actually. Mr. Diggs, uh, let's start with you. Since you have been the person who's had to deal with everybody's logs, all right? You are currently... You're talking about. Well, let's just say between the average... Just the, 
the, me and the players, they're just okay. you've been you've been tasked with, you know, the kind of thing where the captain looks over at you and nods, and you kind of go, right, I will take care of it, and you go, what the fuck does he want? Um, but no, you you know exactly what he <laughs> means. Uh, <laughs> what am I doing here? <laughs> okay, so what I'd like you to do, um, let me pull up everyone's sheet really quick because I have an idea how to make this fair. They come in my room. Mm -mm. I know you're by yourself right now. You're actually, you're st actually no, you're not on the station yet. You're still on the bridge of the of the SS. Because uh, you're, you're. Well, I thought I took off running after I overheard well, them. You're saying. the only person who has access to all the logs and records right now, so you don't want to just take <laughs> off yet. All right. Press is the delete button. Yeah. Uh, where did I get format? It? Where's the format button? Flip poor loosely on it. And oh, right. the there you are. All right, Mr. Bomb. All right, Mr. Orion. Um, okay, so what you're gonna do for me is I want you to roll me a uh, insight and ooh, you're pretty good at this actually. So you're gonna give me insight uh, science roll, and you're gonna give me how many do I have? You're gonna give me five rolls. Uh, complication range three, three. Um, and I like how you put a focus on modifying records in there, just out of nowhere. I didn't like. I didn't see that. Um, I didn't I? Didn't change that this today at all. That was two days. That was two sessions ago <laughs> when I got told I'd be modifying. Right, right, records. right. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, so yeah, you can use a focus, and then you're gonna roll me a challenge dice of one, uh, and you're gonna do that for me five times. Five times, boys. Your modification skill is so high that you modify your own. Okay. Character. Fuck! Jesus! Whoa. So you become like a captain. <laughs> uh, Admiral. Except that last one, that was a, a screw up. I'm sorry. Could you not? Uh, could you make that a task roll of of one, please? Yeah, thank you. Roll that five times. Okay. Uh, pick a crew member. Security. Ha! Yeah. Oh, you want to pick uh, Ross? Yeah, of course. He's he's always reliable. He breaks people's legs for me. Okay. Uh, so you can modify Ross's record. He totally didn't kill anyone inside Starfleet. No. Uh, actually, here, I'm going to send you his record. And you could modify it however you want to while we're working on the rest of this. I take bribes, uh, Salt. Well, it, it's everyone's hide, so remember that. Uh, oh. Yeah, I'm going to give you a link here. Sorry, guys. I'm just sending Diggs a thing so he can look at it. And then... Why'd you send me a picture of your penis? Well, there you go. Send so edit that however you want to. <laughs> however you want to. What the fuck? I did this? yeah. So edit that however you want to. Uh you that's the only one you get access to right now. Oh my god. Is this fucking is this salt writing too much again? <laughs> wow. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> All he does is say, hey, read this, and I stopped, and then yeah. he gets it to me anyway. Wow. All right. Yeah. Um, okay, so we'll cut over to our Gorn while he's working on that. Uh, so now Diggs has got some busy work to do on that. Yep. Um, and you could write it however you want to. You have full access to it. Uh, so um, over in the diplomatic what? section of... So we'll remember this. <laughs> no one would care. Uh, over in the diplomatic section of things uh, are the two Gorn. Uh, and you guys are in the room by yourself. What would you like to do? Just right now, that's the only thing that's in there is a couple of chairs, uh, some like Starfleet ships on the wall, like models, and the Feder United Federation of Planets plaque and all that other stuff that you would see in like an ambassador's office. It's really nice. Really important question. Is there boulder or not boulder? <laughs> oh, yeah, you carry boulder with you, so it's fine. Okay. The response is going to be Boulder is also different. foreign affairs. Yeah, I, I just imagine people like, oh, yeah, corner big in the rock. Rock. So you guys are in the room by yourself, and uh, right now nothing is happening. What would you guys like to do? The door is locked. 
Well, right right now, Gurkek is going to be wandering around, uh, examining all of the models, and, and perhaps um, examining them very closely, and you know, uh, picking at pieces of them, and a, a few pieces break off. And this uh, surprises him, and he <laughs> tries to put them back. You know. <laughs> just as you're meddling with that, you just hear as someone opens the door, uh, and, and it's a it's a man, uh, a very well dressed Starfleet man. Uh, wearing a uh, just normal Starfleet uniform, gold colors, and he is the rank of commander. And he walks over to you and he goes, Good evening, gentlemen. I, my name is Sloan. I'm from Internal Affairs. And he shakes your hands. He, he, he's like Sloan, Section 31. No, uh, not that. He, yeah, not, not that again. one. Yeah, he goes, Not that one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he shakes your hands. Uh, I'm sure that Starfleet has debriefed you boys on why I have you holding here. No. <sighs> that figures. And he throws the tablet down, the big giant beefy one. Goes, <sharp inhale> well, to be quite honest, we would like to know exactly what happened over there. And since you two are both our foreign uh, exchange officers, we'd like to take a very careful uh, step to say that Starfleet does not hold the Gorn hegemony responsible for any of your actions. Grickex is kind of you. Uh, glances at Slar. <laughs> Slar will do the same. Well, not at Slar, but <laughs> at He Slar. glances at himself. <laughs> <laughs> he, like, crosses his eyes. His <laughs> All I right. only see Boulder behind these eyes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, hold on one second here. Uh, I would like to be able to interview you both individually, but I would just like to say that Starfleet takes our, our relationship with the Gorn hegemony very seriously. And so the actions here may well reflect on you as a Starfleet officer and not so much as a citizen or possible citizen of the Federation. Do you understand? No. no. Says <laughs> he just says no. <laughs> well, I'll make it simple for you. The things that you did on the SS will not reflect on you or your reputation as a member of uh, Federation society, but it will have an impact on you as a serving officer. I would like to go ahead and start with you here, Mr. Medical Officer, if you don't mind. We are mind. being fired again. Again. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like that. Nothing Good like job. that at all. I just need you to clear up a few things two for, for me. Two for two. Slar needs resume. <laughs> it, no, no event. I, so, during your events uh, and dealings with Captain James T. Kirk, have you ever felt any sort of malice? At the mention of Kirk's name, to be slight, uh... He throws Slar the boulder in... through the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. There is almost a, a Hurt Love style rage as he picks up the boulder. And, and S Sloan, looks a, Sloan looks a little nervously and he just puts his hand up like, okay, I'm going to take that as a yes. <sighs> <laughs> yes, there's a mess. I understand. Boulder. So, in your serving aboard the Essis, have you ever felt similar malice toward anybody else aboard the crew? The captain, for instance? Maybe a crewman? Oh, no. Quite professional, actually. Uh, captain's very good. Very compliant. Willing Grakek. to sacrifice yeah. all for the mission. Grakek, would you agree with him? The captain's a very compliant man, knows what he's doing? The captain is a wonderful leader. He he exudes confidence. I would follow mm. him to the ends of space. I see. Be careful. He, he is we always the space honest. We're gonna run into God. Get to the other <laughs> end of space, and this is where I stop following you. He is what always honest and enthusiastic. Need? With the starship. Well, I I have to ask, Mister Krakak. Uh, is it Mister, or should I just call you Met Chief Medical Officer? I'm just going to stick with Grakak. Well, Grakak is good. Yes. Yes. Well, I, I have to, I have to wonder how a, a Gorn is able to treat a, a human subject. Let's say spine injury. 
How exactly oh, no. would you go about that? The, the human spine is is much like uh, the bulkhead on a ship. Uh, hmm. it, it it merely requires um, percussive maintenance. You, ah. you, you merely apply uh, sudden force, and then it snaps back into position, and all is good. Well, I, I'll be honest. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> We're checking the so, Sorry, I needed a youth bathroom. <laughs> yeah, Sloane just goes, look, I'm no doctor, but that definitely doesn't sound like the proper way to do things. Grakek. Or, Slar, you, would you not agree? You question my medical prowess. Not at all, sir. I... I'm merely just trying to piece things together here. Slar, is it true that in Gorn culture, percussive maintenance is also used on starships? Oh, yes. Boulder is... yes. What was the question? Is it true that percussive maintenance is often used on starships? He's obviously distracted by where Boulder has gone out of his view, but uh, looks and goes, Yes! I've actually written numerous papers on the benefits of percussive maintenance on warp engines. I see. And so, when you were aboard the Klingon vessel, why didn't you apply the same percussive maintenance? It's very <laughs> difficult. I'm sorry, I keep using the math over and over. <laughs> yeah. Rage poofs. <laughs> Rage poofs. Uh, why didn't you apply the same percussive maintenance? Because there was computer? Mm hmm. I understand. Klingon technology is a little bit different, but I would have expected the same kind of treatment. However, Grakak, if you were to. I know engineering is not your forte, but let's say if you were to take control of a Klingon vessel, would you be able to pilot it? Um. Grakak may be able to uh, activate some automatic systems and uh, cause the ship to, with, with uh, a great amount of luck, pilot itself uh, adequate. And was this all under command of Captain Horatio? Wait, wait. Slar has a question. Where is legal counsel? I heard lawyer. I've watched movies. Lawyer! Oh, there's no need for that. This is just lawyer. a basic inquiry. There's nothing to worry about. You're not on trial here. We're just trying to figure out what happened. Is, uh... He'll Sorry. smash his fist down. I demand a lawyer! Uh, okay. Lawyer! Okay. I, I see that we're going to have to continue this conversation later. And Sloan just sort of bows and then he leaves the room, marking something on his notepad while looking back and smiling. And now we're going to cut... Yeah, and, and then if basically he, he tells... More, we could have challenged him to battle. Yeah, he basically... He tells the guard uh, who comes into your room, he's like, uh, the, the uh, internal affairs officer says you have free roam of the... Uh, common areas of the ship that includes the bar, the kitchen, um, but you will be restricted access to any secure areas, obviously. Slar almost. And you will not be allowed. <laughs> Sorry, <thank you. laughs> Slar keeps poofing. Um, <laughs> uh, he's like, and uh, he's also said that you guys are not allowed back on the Essis currently, uh, as are maintenance crews over there, and they do not want you. But to. my cultures, I, I am studying the German. He, he may have contaminants. The German. The German? The German? Yeah. Oh, you mean that? That is what they call him. He, he, he could not speak adequately. But Slar must leave. Yeah. Very stressed. He, he had severe damage of, of the uh, uh, speech portions of his brain. I had to study him. No, no, no. That's a, that's yeah. an ancient Earth language. It's called German, I believe. Or Russian? I don't know. Anyway. Uh, I no. have studied human languages. This is not something I have He's not on the SS anymore. He's currently being debriefed. Uh, I think forget which deck he's on but yeah he's Who being debriefed. yeah he's being debriefed right now so he's currently not available there are cell cultures there i don't care or <laughs> tech is going to get plastered yeah you guys can go to the bar you can go wherever so all you, so now that you guys have free roam of the ship you guys can go wherever um and if you want to type that out into uh roll 20 that way i can kind of keep track of that that'd be helpful um while i move on to my next victim um that would be mr uh drac pablo ichiban are you there? Yeah, uh, yeah, you you hear like a little uh, beeping at your door. What do you want? Uh, Starfleet Internal Affairs. Oh, Internal Affairs. Are you trying to accuse me of something? And the door just 
opens up and he steps in. Not at all. Do you mind if I come in? And then he shuts the door behind him and I sits down. I would love down. if they <laughs> had you to already get, did. Yeah. I, I would love if they had to get a Tellarite to argue with a Tellarite. <laughs> they, they were just like, oh no. No, that's just my plan. Um, anyway. <laughs> that's great. No, he's like, my name is Commander Sloan, Internal Affairs. I'm just trying to clear up some things that happened aboard the SS. Do you think you can help me out here? I don't know. Do you think can I? Do you think can I? I don't understand. I understand Tellarites are quite argumentative, so I'll keep this brief. Uh, during your time aboard the SS, do you feel as though the captain was inadequate? Be truthful. Uh, well, I mean, he is a human after all. Uh, no offense. So you feel humans are an inferior species? I, I didn't say they're inferior. I just said, you know, they're uh, prone to making mistakes. Unlike Tellarite. Well, uh, I don't know about other Tellarites, but I know I'm uh, pretty capable. But as far as humans go, the captain is uh, passable. Passable. <sighs> and could you elaborate on that? Well, the ship hasn't blown up. I mean, we were, what are those things? Romulans? Klingons? Uh, Klingons, I believe, according to uh, what was told to me. Um, uh, and... Well, he managed to uh, disable them using nothing but your garbage trowel. So, I mean, that has to speak. Then again, it was uh, my brilliant idea that... Uh, did disable the ship, by the way. And how exactly did that happen? Could you tell me what the captain said actually to you? Uh, he said, well, the captain, being the uh, wise human he is, allowed me to uh, do as I wished. So using the tractor beam and some clever uh, applied physics, I managed to take one of the parts of that derelict vessel you humans had and flung it towards the enemy, and knowing your human ships, it was highly unstable, and was mostly going to explode upon impact. That is an incredible story. Do you have any evidence to back this up? Uh, well, the entire crew was up there when I Really? Did it. The whole crew was on the bridge? So you're stating that the entire you, crew was on the getting, bridge? Are you getting smart with me, Commander? Oh, of course not. I would never try to do something so silly as get smart with somebody who clearly did a heroic act. I'm just trying to clear up some truth here. Yeah, uh, it's the whole bridge crew, if you must know. Mmm. So you're saying uh, Orion and Captain Horatio can vouch for you, but what about the science officer? What, the Gorn? <laughs> no, I wasn't speaking about the Gorn. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, which one? Oh, the science author. Oh, Lieutenant the Jonathan. Yeah, the, yeah, whatever his name is. The guy is. I had to play every now and then because we don't have a science officer. <laughs> of course. Really? Because he says here that uh, the captain threw a bottle at your head. Care to explain I'm, that? Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't aware we were questioning Tellarite uh, culture here. In my culture, that is a uh, sign of respect. Really? Right, the captain was merely... I find that humor. fascinating, because I happen to have visited Tellar, and I had to learn quite a bit of its culture, and I don't remember bottles being thrown in your head, but I will take your word for Throw it. Throw a bottle in his face. <laughs> you, <laughs> you don't uh, have... No offense, Commander, but you look a little fragile for proper Tellarite customs. <sighs> You're right. I wouldn't stand a chance against you. You clearly, clearly are the most powerful person in this you room. You almost said queerly. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would have been a hilarious insult. You queerly... He's like, how dare you? Yes, you clearly are the most powerful individual in this room. I will not bother you any further. Well, I did manage to throw a Klingon about 20 feet the oh, other day, so... Really? Yeah. Explain how that happened. Come here, I'll show you. I'd rather not. Could you just tell it, me in it's, words? It's quite easy. You see, I'm quite strong, and I merely picked it up and... Hurled it You're talking about one of the Klingon forward. boarders uh, aboard the SS. No, the Klingon crew we had. We had, of course, the boarders. Hmm. Okay. 
just double checking making he's like writing things down very well uh that's all i need to know listen if you want to go anywhere on the ship you're free access to all common areas um clearly you are going to be restricted from any secure areas for security reasons uh while this inquiry is going on and you are more than welcome uh to explore the station i wish you uh an enjoyable stay here and uh, he smiles uh how do i uh where's your latest comms sweet i need to communicate i need to call somebody uh comms why would you need to access comms well i need to make a personal call my family might be worried about during me. uh the inquiry i would ask that you keep all communications uh to a zero Oh, so that that sounds like you're implying I'm being detained. Not at well, all. You I, are not uh, being detained abort this. You are free to leave. The vacuum of space, I am afraid, is not exactly welcoming to Tellarite physiology. But you are quite welcome to step out of an airlock at any time. Until then... Is that a threat? Not at all. Until then, you have a good day, sir. And he smiles and writes something down and leaves. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go call my cousin, who's a Tellarite lawyer, and... Uh... <laughs> Ask him to be my counsel. Uh, well, there's no need for a counsel yet. Um, okay. No, he's he's just gonna call to add more bullshit. Okay, and if you yeah, want, just to have on standby. So, like, when he starts to argue with me, you see this tellerite in a suit. Like, hey, hold on there. Uh, yeah. Do you want to try to uh try to access that? Because right now comms are completely blocked off for you. Did you want to try to sneak around it? I'll hold off for now. Okay, so you, I, I, I love what was said in chat. Am I being detained? <laughs> <laughs> Tellerite sovereign citizen. <laughs> I'm a citizen of the galaxy. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, you can. Uh, <laughs> you can go to uh, join Sar uh, Grakek and Slar in. Uh, in the bar or whatever um just let me know if you decide to do anything and put it in the uh roll 20 chat so i can sh make sure i'm keeping track of it all right all right so now i'm gonna con come on over to uh i uh mr mr orion are you finished dude you know how much he fucking wrote i'm not <laughs> i'm like <laughs> I'm done with the first page of almost three. You can fill... Hey, listen. Uh, do me a favor. Make a copy of all of that uh, that he has written. Save it somewhere. And then you can just start removing... You can start removing whole sections after you make a copy of it. So that we have a backup of that. Because I need that for... Um, I need that for DM reasons. Yeah, I but I... I'm, I need, like, another entire time before I'm done with it. I can't... I don't want to remove any. I'm rewriting. That's fine. That's fine. Keep going. Uh, then I'll go over uh, to uh, Mr. I'll try to be faster. I just, I'm also trying to listen to you, so it's kind of it's slower than I normally do. No, no, it's fine. Uh, so I go over to Mr. Ross's room, and Mr. Ross, you hear a uh, at your door. Shoot him. Come in. And uh, his room is, like, spotless right now. He's got a... Uh... It's a station he's got his room. Uniform on his bed. Oh, okay. I thought it was the. Uh, no, you're not on the SS. You're 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 in a you're in a station room. And, and the bastard, you told us to go to quarters. The quarters on the station. Your quarters were destroyed. Oh. Yeah, your quarters were destroyed oh. on the SS. By the way, so. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. You, you, he walks in. He's like Sloan. Internal investigation. Internal affairs. I'm sure you have not been too unfamiliar with us. We have quite a list to go through, Mister Campbell. I don't know what you're talking about. It's I'm nice sure you me. don't. Yes, and he shakes your hands. I'll be quite blunt with you, sir. I don't I, appreciate I, the kind of I work that you've been doing up pants. to this. Huh? I wipe my hand off on my pants after I touch his hand. I'll be quite honest. I don't like the kind of work that you've done, but personal opinions aside, I'm going to do my job professionally. We're going to start with what exactly happened aboard that Klingon vessel. Mm, we haven't been able to I retrieve your logs for some reason. Probably damage from the damage the ship took. I'm sure I'm that's true. That they're intact. That would be that would be quite convenient, wouldn't it? But tell I me, in your words, what, what happened aboard the uh, the Klingon vessel? I don't know. I was aboard our ship. Were you? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I got that mixed up. That was Nick who was aboard. My bad. Uh, I'm going to reverse that. That's right. You were in the cargo bay. So tell me exactly what happened with the Klingon borders in the cargo bay. Uh, it was pretty bad. It's, uh, it's an understatement. All I see is gunfire and a bunch of dead, uh, dead crewmen. Exactly what happened in there. 
uh, from what I understand from talking to the captain afterwards is they had directly communicated with him and mocked him and then boarded us. They do, they communicated with the captain. What was the captain's orders to you? Uh, well, communications by that point were out. They just mocked him saying, prepare to be boarded, and that was it. Typical Cleon, uh, Cleons. Why were there so many dead crewmen? A lot of them had phaser burns, not Klingon disruptors. Hey, really? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I didn't shoot anybody yet. You didn't shoot anybody? No, I, I didn't even shoot the Klingons. And we're exactly... I had to use hand-to-hand -hand combat. And why can't we find any of the Starfleet phasers on board? You do know it's a prison ship, right? A prison ship? I, I'm sorry, this ship was made for reclamation, not war or storing prisoners. Your job was to transport oh, hold on, hold on, goods. Let, let, me, let, me, let me stop you. Okay. How many of the crewmen's records have you read? How, how many crewmen? That is completely not your business. You're no, going to no, answer no, my not, questions. I'm not saying it to be rude. It's just, look, between you and me, I've... Uh, made some bad decisions in my career. Oh, and, you uh, say you're that, telling me that you've made bad decisions. Based on your record, I can see that. Yeah. And if you looked at everybody else's record, you can kind of get why they're there. Now, granted, mine is a uh, complete bullshit. I shouldn't be here. I mm -hmm. should be probably home or something, but, you know. Really? And also... It... I heard from one of the crewmen that you boarded a space station and there were other federations firing at each other? What exactly happened? Hmm. I don't, don't think about know. it too I... hard. Look, let me speak, mister, all right? I... All right, so... He's, smil I'll, I'll he's just smiling and looking at you, but he's clearly pissed off. Yeah, well, he can suck my dick. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. All right, so this is what happened. Mm. We received a distress signal, and I was told to board the station to see what was happening. Now, this was before the other Starfleet ship showed up. Hold on, hold on. Other that. Starfleet ship? Yeah, I don't remember the name of it, but they, they told us to... What class of ship was it, do you remember? I know it was a warship. I was we don't busy have being stranded on the station. I'm assuming you mean Constitution class. We don't have oh, warships. Probably. Look, all I know is that it had a lot of guns. Anyway, before you interrupted me, asshole, I was uh, stranded on a station and about to die. Stranded on a station and about to die. And what was the captain's orders to you? Uh, ascertain the damage to the station. It turns out uh, the reactor was going critical and it was breached, so it was leaking uh, atmosphere. I see. And there was also a uh, a malfunction with the transporter. A malfunction? Yeah, our transporter Explain. didn't want to work that day. I, I don't know. It it was having trouble locking onto us once we were, when we were in the station. I was there with the two Gorn. It managed to get them out, but I somehow stayed behind. I see. And so there are no records of what you did when they were when you were behind. I'm assuming that might be in your log that you wrote, right? Uh, yes, um... Halfway done. <laughs> look, be between you and me, and he, like, leans in, don't don't go on that station. There's something on there that makes you go crazy. I'll make that a personal note of mine. Uh, one last question, and it's about crew discipline. How exactly do you respond in a disciplinary action? What's your typical response? Oh, my God. I, I hope Crewman Daniels doesn't come in on a fucking wheelchair. <laughs> it depends on the the action. On the action. So, let's say somebody wanted to contact you, the first officer of the Esses, to ascertain a situation that would be happening in the engineering room. Yeah, what about it? How would you respond to that? I'd go talk to that man personally and tell him it's not my job. Do not contact me personally. Contact the bridge officer. Hmm. Just there's a chain of command you have to follow. Yes, I am the chief of security. However, don't leave your station to contact me personally. That is a very, very fair thing. Well, if it's if anything, that sounds like the most sense you've made so far. Don't worry, you're fine for now. 
you're allowed to wander the station. You have full access to the common areas. And, uh, of course, you will be restricted from any secure areas. I'm sure you can follow those orders. Uh, and you will also stay off the SS until we are done with our investigation. Is that understood? Uh, yes. There's something I have to know, though. Yes. Are we under arrest? Absolutely. Am I being detained? Absolutely <laughs> not. You are not being under arrest for anything. Trust me, if you were under arrest, you'd be in a brig. As a security officer, you should know that by now. So I can speak freely without any fear of reprisal, right? I would say that most of what you say, if everything, is on record. So go ahead. Say whatever you like. All right, good. Get the fuck out of my room. I said it's on record. <laughs> yeah, and I said get the fuck out of my room. And he just smiles and writes down something on that really, like, etch-a-sketch-looking notepad thing from the original series. And he walks out and smiles. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, um, Diggs, are you good? I got, um, on the sixth log, but it's the longest rut one. You don't have to, I'm not going to worry about that too much. Do you think that's good enough for now? Uh, unless you're reading the, the sixth and seventh log, I don't. <laughs> Um, can I, can I, uh, can some, ah, oh, damn it. We're, we're slowly recovering the logs. We got yeah, six so, of them so far. So yeah, uh, as you're doing that, the door to the bridge opens up and here comes internal invest eternal affairs, uh, Sloan. And, uh, you have seen Sloan before, but you didn't know what job he has. And I, he just goes, will, Orion. I will stand up straight and then bow slightly and go, how may I be of pleasure? I knew you looked familiar. You were on that one outpost with uh, what was her name? The one with the the one with the uh, the cat ears. Uh, furball. Uh, I can never remember her name. That was quite sure leave. It's good to see you. Sir. It's okay. I was the one worth remembering. <laughs> mm, obviously. It's good to see. You. Well, I don't know if you know me, but my name is uh, Commander Sloan, Internal, of course Internal Affairs. You. I'm currently investigating uh, what happened on this ship. Uh, what exactly are you still doing aboard the SS? I'm currently trying to recover our logs that were briefly scrambled. I have uh, five of them if you require them, but the other two will take some time. I see. I need you to be honest with me here. And this is strictly between us. And he puts his notepad down. How confident are you in Captain Horatio? You know, my people are very intimate people. Mm -hmm. Horatio is not that intimate of a person. And I find that that stops the bond that we could create if he would just let his guard down a little bit. Let his guard down but, a little bit. And as in... You know what I heard? Hmm. I heard that he's quite a violent drunk. I heard that he... What? I know. It's hard to believe. That's... A man like that, with so many commendations, a man I... who has served on, on many different stations, have such a violent I, I can tell you personally that I have never... You've never been the victim of anything violent from that man. You've never been the victim. Have you ever witnessed him being abusive to somebody or anybody aboard the ship? I, I feel people get confused when someone is stern and strong in their command versus being abusive. And when so he talks, he talks with passion and force and people could, you could probably mistake it as being like aggressive but it's commanding and i think that's where people get the the wrong idea from him i see and so you'd say you kind of admire the man he's a little old for me <laughs> <laughs> that's not what i meant but i'll oh oh i'm sorry yes I'm sorry. i feel he does good for all of his crew good in what and way? That he would be the first one to show us the way to the escape pod. i see he would go down with the ship i uh 
I think he understands that his life, as well as all of the life of his crew, are more valuable alive, and ships can be replaced. And I know it's an old saying that going down with the ship is honorable. Yeah. But also having a strong, passionate, commanding commander that's not dead because they went down with the ship when it wasn't necessary is also very commendable. That's interesting. Well, I'm not going to take up any more of your time. Just let me know when those logs are done, and uh, I will... Uh... Do you have an email? I'll send them right over to you. <laughs> yeah, you just send it over to the station when you're okay, done. Wait, wait. Um, I don't, just... I'll figure that out, that button. When you're done, you have free roam aboard the station. Uh, obviously, you can't go through any secure areas. Uh, I think most of your crew are actually in the bar. Well, <sighs> just as soon as you're done, I suppose... I did tell yeah, them not sorry. to put anybody from the crew aboard this mission, but I think I can trust you to do the right thing. And he looks at you. Then you have great trust inside. I am sure I do. Anyway, I will leave you to your job. And he leaves the uh, bridge of the ship. Give him a slight bow, and then I'll sit back down in my chair and go back in. <laughs> and take a shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this, you know, a good this part of in... being on a garbage scow is every seat's connected to the plumbing. So everywhere you sit, you can shit. <laughs> Captain, I got a uh, message coming in. That's, that's, why we have to, post. That's, that's why we each have to cover three or four rolls because everyone else is on cleanup duty. Wow. So, uh, Captain, you're currently sitting in your... The, the waiting area, it's just your typical kind of like bed quarters with that weird gold mesh thing that was in the original series and like the green lighting. Oh, that one. Yeah. You're just sitting in there and uh, what are you doing? Do you have music playing? Do you drinking? What's going on? Um, he He's just sitting back drinking and staring at the ceiling and blowing smoke rings right at the uh, smoke detector. <laughs> And then, uh, just as you're, uh, just as you're like sitting there, you just hear someone's at your door. Uh, he 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 goes, yeah, whatever. And the door opens up, and smoke comes out, and then you just see uh, Sloane kind of waving his hand around. Uh, did we did we meet? I don't think I don't I don't think you met Sloane. No. No, you didn't. Okay, I was just making sure. No, you talked to the Commodore. Okay. Yeah, he walks in and he's like, ah, you must be the famous Captain Horatio. I'm Commander Sloan from Internal Affairs, sir. I'm sure you're quite familiar with our department. You uh, have quite a file. It's pretty impressive. Do you mind if I sit down? He goes, yeah, if you gotta. Well, I have been talking to pretty much everybody on your crew. And I do have to say, Captain, they do seem to admire you. I can't. He, see he rolls the whiskey in his glass and just kind of idly looking at the uh, liquid levels, and he's like, look, uh, how long have you been in internal affairs? 22 years. So let's skip past the pleasantries and bullshit. I know it's part of your job, but uh, you're here to nail me to the wall, and you're wondering if I'm a hanger or a nailer, so... Uh, <laughs> he just looks down and smiles, and then he looks back up. He's like, you're a very perceptive man, Captain. He goes, I look, this ain't my first rodeo, fuck you I'm sure it's not. Well, I'll be quite honest with you. I don't think you're going to be fit as a captain, let alone a member of the Federation. But that's not for me to judge. I'm just here. He, to... he leans into his chair and he goes, You ever kill a man? I've had to, yes. <laughs> and I open yeah. the door and I shoot him in the back with a phaser. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. He's my boulder. <laughs> He sits back in his chair and he goes... And we beam him into space. He goes, you have to understand. There are two sets of rules. There's the ones on paper and there's mm -hmm. the ones in the real world. I live in the real world and you live on paper. You're going to accuse me of breaking the paper. But I'll tell you what's really going to happen. Tell me what's really yeah. going to happen, Captain. I'm all ears. At the end of this trial, you're going to say I did a bad job. Then you're going to reassign me to a new ship. You're going to tell me to never do it again, and I'll promise I won't. 
that I'm going to take my crew of misfits and I'm going to go out there and put boot into ass for the Federation. Or you're going to throw me into a gulag. And you're going to suck dick from the international community until the Federation is a joke. You need people like me. The world is shit. And I, sir, am your dick to fuck them up. <laughs> he just laughs, and then he looks up. He's like, that is quite the speech. I can see why your crew really admires you. You seem to know how to get to the heart of the issue, and uh, you're not afraid to say what's, in your, uh, what's, what's kind of just in there. Well, I'll be quite honest with you. And I have been pretty much saying that over and over again, but I am going to be completely honest with you. I'm not here to nail you. I'm not here to put you away. I'm not some sort of boogeyman. I'm just here to find out exactly what happened aboard the USS Essis. Now, how you cooperate with me is of no concern. I'm he not goes, some... Yeah, you know what? I'll tell you everything that happened. Go ahead and ask. Very no, well. No, no pageantry, no bullshit. I, he, he just says, I'm tired. I look like a bag of shit for a reason. Very well then. When you left Space Dock and you were on your way to the Zukov, correct? Yeah, yeah. We were supposed to go tow it. You had engine trouble, correct? It, it, your engine stalled somewhere? He says, uh, yeah, the... Gorn are good at many things, but engineering is not among them. <laughs> and also our ship is garbage. And he just laughs and he then goes, I'm not going to argue with that, but uh, why exactly did the ship fail to launch from dock? Oh, Gorn. In lack of maintenance, we've not had spares for a while. He writes it down. He's like, all right, very good. So when you reached or where you were on your way, you received a distress call, correct? Yeah. And do you remember exactly what was being said? Yep. Uh, there was a station. Something was going wrong. Uh, there was a bit of a kerfuffle about uh, people losing their minds. Uh, seeing as it was a Federation distress call, it is obligatory to answer and pretty hard to wipe. I'm sure you've met Orion. He's pretty smart, but uh, competent and Erasing memory banks. No, he is not. I see. Fuck oh, up. <laughs> well, what exactly did you do? Well, we showed up. You showed up. Since some, uh, you yeah. answered, you answered the hail and you showed up. Of course we did. It's a Federation priority distress call. You may not understand this, you goddamn desk jockey, but out in space we look out for each other. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> Next door, you just hear a toilet flush. We have thin, Sorry. We have thin walls it's here. It's a really busy space station. The walls are paper thin, so you just hear, like, shitting constantly. You hear some guy going, Oh, God! Ooh. It's Indian night. <laughs> really heavy Indian spicy food. Oh, God. Oh. Uh, um, yeah. So you answered this hail. You went to go to a space station, one of the Federation outposts we have out there. And you said there were, everyone was overcome with a space madness, correct? He, he goes, yeah, people were obsessed with a map and a treasure. and Yeah, it sounded hmm. too good to be true. I found all the treasure in my life to be just boxes of cat shit. So I realized that any sort of hope people have is a lie. I see. And I decided to send some people over to find out what's going on on the Federation starship. Now, uh, that's the part found. I'm really interested in, Captain. I'm sorry to cut you off. I'm really interested as to what happened exactly when your first officer, puts up in air quotes, and your Gorn Nationals uh, decided to board this, uh, what was it? Was it a starship or the star base? I need to get my facts straight here. Well, there was a star base and there was a starship. There's also a Romulan starship present oh. and a Klingon starship present, both that, devoid of life uh, signs. We did not have this information. He starts writing that down very well. It, devoid of life signs and powered down. They'd uh, apparently boarded the uh, star base and looked for this treasure. Unfortunately, they were too dumb to leave. Too dumb or overcome with space madness? Which one is it? Too dumb. I see. Well, that, uh, that definitely contradicts from your medical officer. Um, so, what exactly happened when your first officer, again, air quotes, uh, boarded the station, or boarded this starship, uh, for th what reason exactly? 
He just shrugs and he goes, I had to find out what was going on. Federation can't afford to lose starships for no reason. I see. So, what did they find? Well, our man went on board. Everyone was fucking crazy. We got him out of there and reactor was failing anyway. As we pulled out... Are you talking about Starfire, the, star, the star base or the starship? Both. Oh. Okay. So, Starfire told us we were told not to be there and that they had it handled. So we left. Mm. They were far better equipped. They had far better facilities. We left the area. Logs you know, you uh, just send it to me on Discord. It's fine. Um, and then he, he just goes, you know, what's interesting, Captain, is I asked the captain of the Starfire uh, prior to coming here to speak to you. And to be quite honest, I'm really surprised. I wasn't Crap, expecting nice. somebody to cover for somebody so quickly. But... What's on official record is on official record, and I can't just put my opinions on there. Not open. Well, yeah, listen. He goes, you've been doing this 22 years. And he goes, how long do you think I've been in Starfleet? 47. <laughs> it's like 35, I think. That's what we put down. Yeah. 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 About 35, to give or take. He goes, you, you want to survive this long? You want some real career? Huh? Why not? He sits back in his chair and he goes, Rule one, agree with the narrative. Rule two, agree with everyone higher ranking. Rule three, outlast them. Rule four, start drinking. Hmm. Hmm. Well, it definitely fits your personality profile, that's for sure. However, I don't really subscribe to such rules. I don't have the luxury. Being out What's there... What's your rank again? Commander. Yeah, I'm a captain. Yes. And I'm an admiral. For now. So. <laughs> All the updating, you're now an admiral. <laughs> See the log, I'm really good. No, no, it, like, it, they'll do the thing where it's just like, unfortunately, Captain Horatio, I have to give you some bad news. You are no longer a captain. And you're just like, I knew it. And you're just like, from now on, you will be admiral. And it plays like that uplifting, yeah. like... <laughs> Jerry that Goldsmith was, music. And, and a <laughs> brand new ship warps in and the view screen are... We should do the thing where it's like we have like the Excelsior in the foreground like, oh god, I hope it's the Excelsior and then it pans and then over the and it's the, S, it's the SS behind it and you're like, no. But they've it's put on... Brand new though. But they've put on like two more nacelles in their office. Yes. <laughs> and a new coat of paint. Warp five without exploding. Anyway, um, <laughs> okay. Uh, and then he just sort of like looks down at his pad and he's going, "All right, looks like we have what we need for that." And so you retrieved a. So let's skip ahead. Where you are uh, scanning the Zukov, and your crew uh, ends up coming into battle with a Klingon bird of prey. Right. The very same one that's sitting right outside this star, sh uh, this star base. Thought you guys know, would enjoy good. it. That's quite a capture for somebody who's just flying in an Ant Antares class ship. To be honest, I was yeah, quite I surprised. Yeah, I thought you guys would enjoy it, but I, if you don't want it, I can have my guys blow it up. Just, you know, no problem. <laughs> You're very funny, Captain. But I will just say this. Based on what I've been told and how you captured it, I'm not entirely convinced that it was captured within regulation. However, and I'm only going to I know what you're going to say. Out there in the black, you can't just follow regulations. You have to go by the seat of your pants and phaser at your side. And I agree with yeah, you. I agree goes, with you. Uh, I, I'll, I'll be honest. I haven't read the rules in about 10 years. Of course not. It's very clear based on the record here. But I will say this. Based on the information that was given to us by the now man out of time uh german officer i want to know exactly your side of things how exactly did the zukov get destroyed well um and were you in any were you able to salvage anything yeah we got its memory banks and data core and we also have one of its crewmen i think that's a win-win-win so you're saying the entire starship was destroyed the entire Correct. thing uh, no, there's probably bits of it floating out there, but there's also Klingons out there. So that's like reaching into a bee's nest to get a dollar. 
No, thank you. That's a fair assumption. So, I'm just confused as to how you were able to capture the Klingon ship. What, what did you do exactly? It's not in any of these logs. He just laughed and he goes, "Again, you need people like me to make this work. It's called balls, son. And if you had any, you'd know that." And he just sighs and he looks down. He's like, I can see this is going to take us a lot longer than I expected. Well, as of this moment, sir, you're no longer in an inquiry. You have a court date set for tomorrow morning. I expect to see you I, there. I am so tempted to say what did the five fingers say in the pan. <laughs> it's up to you. <laughs> I, and, and then he goes, and I can't wait to tear you down. He's like, you have to lift him up first. He's like, for what? I'm already at the bottom of the barrel. Oh, I have a laundry list. I drive list. a garbage scout. What are you going to do? Send me to a Federation penal colony for 20 years where I can talk about my feelings, drink, and not have to work? Fuck you. <laughs> Bring it. <laughs> can we take that option, please? Yeah, so so he just, he just goes, at any rate, I'll see you in the morning. You have free roam aboard the ship if you wish. You can go to the bar and get your drink on. I'm sure you're going to need it because tomorrow I'm sure you're going to have one hell of a hangover. It is. And a he points. He points at your uniform. And he's like, "You got something on your shirt." And he looks down. Where? Where? What else? He's like, "Gotcha." You. You <laughs> then he leaves. This will be the last time, gadget. <laughs> he just leaves. <laughs> um, okay, so everyone was so Psyduck and and uh, Kobold were in the bar. Drinking? Uh, I'm to... still in the room. Oh, you're just still in the room? Okay. Yeah, he's just laying on I... the bed like, so, oh, shit. Okay, what do you guys want to do? You have uh, a few... You have. You, you can go to bed and just do the trial in the morning, because um, all of you are going to be called. Or um, you guys can go to the bar and hang out, talk, whatever. I'll head to the bar, because I finished the long. Yeah. So you go to the bar. Anybody else going to the bar? Yeah, sure, I will as well. Okay. So Slar oh. I'll grab Ross on the way into the bar and make sure we're isolated. Now you're gonna get like a little table in the corner. No yeah. no, before we enter the bar, like before we walk in. Ah, gotcha. Look, Orion, I already turned you down once. I mean It's not about that. I I read your log. I oh. really appreciate you calling me a cool guy. Yeah, you're pretty cool, Orion. But I also had to change nearly everything so <laughs> try not to use your log as any kind of like evidence or anything like that because it probably doesn't matter he'll like scroll through the new log and he's like oof oh, oh, okay i got it <laughs> all right let's go get fucking wasted uh right. captain what do you do uh the captain is just gonna go back to his quarters and mm. uh read a book and drink Slar will go on to acquire tools and spare parts for uh, for the SS and stored in the boulder. Okay. Uh, do you want to put stuff in boulder? Is that what you're yes. saying? Is that what you're saying? Remember, boulder still has one of those uh, riot gear helmets taped on them and a phaser taped on them from early. Who? Oh, God. Yeah, I, I taped a phaser and a riot helmet to Boulder so it would look menacing. Oh, in case we got no, they took they took that away. They took away all of the stuff. They couldn't find any of the uh, Federation phasers. So, <laughs> no. So, uh, based on just some hearsay, you guys, uh, somebody on your ship um, is clearly giving uh, Sloan information. But also, oddly Kill enough... Kill Daniels. No, it's not Daniels, it's Stanley. Oddly enough, uh, all of your phasers are also missing. Like, all the phasers on the ship. They can't find any of the weapons you guys had. Wait, wait, wait. They took my fake phaser, which is a lighter? Yeah, they can't find anything. For oh some reason, God. anything that anything weapon that was on that ship is they just gone. My phaser banks. They took my fucking phase lighter. <laughs> it's a lighter. They can't take oh, these weapons weapon. away in a flat. I know. Yeah. Oh. We'll, we'll grab the lizards. Right we'll overload the core in the station. They cannot get away with this. That's a bad idea. Don't do that. Okay. <laughs> uh, one of the the one of the the science officer that's normally on the bridge of the ship kind of like goes over. He's like, "Do you mind if I sit down with you guys?" Sure. All right. Mm -hmm. He, he just like nervously sits down. He's like, <laughs> "You can't say that in public." 
and sober. I come down, Orion. Don't worry, guys. Oh. I didn't tell Sloan anything, and he just like looks nervously around the table. That's exactly what a traitor would say. And I slam my hand on the table. And then he like he like jolts a little bit, and he's like, "Look, I I didn't say I didn't tell him I didn't tell him about any of the stuff that that the captain did. I promised. I didn't say anything." Look, look science officer, or whatever you're fucking. I'm pretty sure I know who it is. Do you remember the new hire we took on from that station we went to? The Gorn, yes. No, the the one I sent to the kitchens. The other Gorn? Oh. Stanley. Stanley, yes. Oh, the Italian guy? No, the Italian guy died. Um, Stanley's no. a guy from the space the station. Who could not speak. Remember the guy who was Stanley on Stanley that... was once Rogers from that, uh... Yeah, that, uh, that yeah. cap, the fake Captain Rogers... Guy, well, uh, I'm really talked sad to, guys... to see the Italian guy gone because I really liked his meatballs. So he, he <laughs> leans into this guy. Look, I, I talked to some of the cargo techs, and that's uh, the other thing. Nobody Stan... can seem to find any of the cargo techs, it's like they just disappeared. Oh, yeah, they hate our guts, they probably left. But anyway, from what the cargo techs were telling me, Stanley booked it and uh, he was helping sabotage the ship during all. Wow. So if you see him break his kneecaps, I never really learned how to do combat. Look, I—I have. Easy, come here. Like, I'll show you. Yeah, he like looks at him with like pity. He he just kind of looks over at the tellerite and he's like, "How how does your head feel after the captain threw that bottle at your head several times?" He never did that. Uh, then I go to like then I go to wrestle him. <laughs> Oh, you can <laughs> wrestle him in the bar? Because I've been drinking, and Tellerites get uh, ornery when they're drinking. Yeah, he's <laughs> just it's, like... It's not, it's not mean wrestling, like playful wrestling, like, come here! Uh, yeah, do me a favor, if you're going to wrestle him, give me a... This should be pretty easy, because... The... Oh, he's going to break this dude in half. Uh, give me a fitness and security check. Um, I Make it a challenge roll of two. And task roll of... Oh, complication! Complication, yeah. complication one, yeah. You're not gonna have trouble with this guy. Or am I? Uh, you throw him to the ground, and he grunts, and he goes, "Oh, what, what did I do? Why are you hitting me? Why am I being assaulted? I didn't do anything wrong." You gotta think fast in space, boy. And then he uh, like scurries up, and he's just like, "You're all crazy! You're all crazy! You're gonna go down tomorrow!" And then he like runs away. What a science sissy. officer should have nice. a, a science officer should have a mind. Ryan, uh, oh, you'll make that man feel comfortable, will you? Give him a neck rub. The science officer said what now? I'm um gonna need a few more. Oh, I, I, I have a tr I have trouble getting in the mood when they're pussies. I pour him a <laughs> bot. I pour. I fill his glass with my bottle. Yeah, I put like the wrong stuff. Right right and I just get him like a whole bottle of whiskey. Like there you go, bud. Yeah. Um, so, uh, while you guys are doing all that, um, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, we're just going to cut to 700 hours. Um, and where are you guys so at? So old now. Yeah. Uh, how, so where are you guys at? 700 hours. It's in the, uh, on the bar drinking. I'm trying to, uh, in someone else's bed. Trying to, uh, access the, uh, communications array. Okay. Uh, you want to try to access communications array? Yeah, I'm going to call my cousin the lawyer. All right, so I won't have this happen at 700. We can do this a little bit earlier. Um, All right. So give me a, a control and uh, security. Um, give me a complication range of three, challenge dice of two. And yeah, that's fine. Um, you you type into the... You, so you don't completely botch it, but you don't make it access. You don't... Uh, you don't get a chance to access any communications, but you definitely can hide. You hide your stuff. Who's this cousin? It's your cousin. I don't have a cousin. Hangs up the phone. Big American titties. <laughs> do you want to? Cousin, you want to go bowling? Do... <laughs> Me, cousin. Do, do you want to? Do you want to try one more time? Uh, I'm gonna see if I can get. Uh, who's? I think Diggs is good at uh, this type of stuff to <laughs> communicate. <laughs> You're you're very wrong. I do not do my job. Yeah, he picked. I'm, I'm, I'm he gonna try to roll is, I don't know if you know this or not. I'll try though. Whatever. Grekek said he is. All right, I get Grekek too, even don't... though I don't like fully trust him. All right. So, what do you want to tell Grekek? 
All right, so like, all right, so uh, as you know, I am a, uh, you know, I explained to him as they are, may already know, I'm quite the verbose and eloquent speaker, but uh, you do have if, many words. If they, uh, if they do <laughs> try to uh, nail us to the wall, I got a cousin who is a lawyer, and uh, not that you know, but us Tellerites tend to make the best lawyers and politicians in this side of the galaxy. So, if we can get you them to speak a lot. If we do get them to come help represent us, it might help us in the long run if they uh, try to, you know, court-martial any of us. Cousin shows up in full battle armor and challenges the fucking truck. <laughs> <laughs> I feel about guy. So what we need to do is we need to uh, get access to the array, which seems kind of strange. You know, a Federation ship is blocking all incoming and outgoing communications. Just, just, just for, behave oddly. Just for you guys. Yeah, it's literally just for you guys. So if you want to... Oh, I, I, I thought you were going to say, like, just for you guys, yeah. I'm going to blow you up. No, no, no. <laughs> it's, it's, if it's, I had realized that, I would have asked some random stranger for their communicator. Uh, you could ask for them for the communicator, but it wouldn't have worked. You have to have oh. them do it. They have to put their command code in. <laughs> I was like, is it really that simple? Well, it's kind of like uh, when you work in a secured facility, you have to like use an ID. Um, and it's very similar here. Basically, you have to like, it, that way they can know who's making a call and where is it going. So if oh. somebody random wanted to make a call for you, um, they totally could if you can convince them. But it would also be logged that they helped you. So you got to hope that somebody wants to help you. Um, okay, so if you want to do this, Grikek, you're going to need to give me a uh, control and security role. And you security can use your you can use your phone. What's that? So security was like fighting. Uh, you're breaking security. You're you're trying to break past security to make a call. Uh, complication range three, um, and challenge dice two. Uh, you make a connection outwards, but it is just a little bit, uh, kind of messy. So, uh, you get a connection through to Tellar, and the guy picks up and he's like, Ah, oh, who's this? This is Grakak. Who is this? Who's Grakak? Grakak is Grakak. Answer. I don't have time for this. Identify yourself. You must have time for this. Identify yourself. I have a Tellarite who wishes to speak to another Tellarite. I highly doubt that. Are you calling me a liar? Wait. Do you doubt Is that Drac? I don't know who you're talking about. Drac, you am, old uh, fool, what are you up to? I'm, I'm This Brack. one wishes to argue with you for many hours. I need to talk to my cousin, Crack. Why? <laughs> His name is Crack. <laughs> you, you'll know why here in a minute when flesh my, happens. My again. aunt's name is Frack. It's, it's kind of a theme in our family. Oh yeah. So he, he's just like, so why are you calling me? Yeah. I need Crack's help for something. Why? What did you do? Uh, Somebody say Crack. Excuse me. Are you implying that I'm on the wrong side of the law again? I can definitely say that you are always on the wrong side of the law. But that's, that's quite all right. That's why we're still relatives, I'm sure. All right, so I need some legal counsel. Legal counsel? Why do you need my legal counsel? I thought you were one of the best argumentative people in our family. I am, but you're better at speaking with the human types. They think I'm a little what you call abrasive, and I tend to make them cry. <laughs> there was that one incident where I threw the witness across the room. Ah, uh, that was that was wonderful. I that was a great day. That was one of my favorite days. Fine then, fine then. I will do as you ask. Thank you, cousin. I owe <sighs> Send you. Send me your coordinates. Where are you at? And then I tell them where we're at. Yeah, Starbase Eleven. Uh. Let me just. I'll just do. Hey, Slar, why are these things making me so thirsty? Are you eating them sand peas? I'm eating those pretzels. Oops. 
Space pretzels. Okay. Oh, they wow. move when you chew on them. All right. So it is. Once <laughs> they move when you chew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're like gummy pretzels. So, <laughs> so uh, it's now 700 hours. And you all are currently uh, just being escorted into the uh, courtroom. And in there are three people. Uh, there is a head counsel. Uh, he is the guy clearly with all the rank and stuff for the station. It's uh, Commodore Decker, obviously. Not that one. Um, to his left is... To him, to his left is a commander. Uh, it is a Vulcan man. Uh, you don't recognize him at all. And to his right is Sloan. And you all are being led into this room. The rest of the crew besides the captain are currently being sat down in like what's called a jury, like a little jury box. So, Captain Horatio, you stand here before us to be judged for your actions aboard the USS Essis. Could you please confirm your identity? He goes, uh, I am a sentient boulder. Uh, and yeah, then they, they kind of like whisper between each other and Kirk applauds. And and uh, Me too. yeah, yeah, no, the the <laughs> Commodore Decker like, just it, like it, slams it, his it, fist it, down. He's like, Captain, this is serious. Could you please, for the record, put your hands on the device in front of you and do what's right? Uh, I just imagine that that applause as it starts off like really slow applause <laughs> and it turns into an ocean of applause <laughs> of the crew and everyone just looks really really confused and even the people at the podium start applauding <laughs> just to join in. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, he pounds on the thing. He's like, just put your hand on the thing. He, he puts it on it. It goes. Oh, yeah, hold on. I got the thing. I, it's, uh, oh, please. Yeah, so it's like Captain oh, Horatio Starship USS SS. Formerly. Yeah. <laughs> Commendations. Silver Cross Commendation. Uh, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not done yet. <laughs> uh, commendations. Uh, Order of the Batleth in Klingon Empire. <laughs> He's, he was like, some guy pulled a sword on him and he like threw a beer bottle at his face. And they're like, wow, this guy's great. Oh my God. I'm sorry. I'm not done yet. Uh, yeah, hold on. I'm just pulling this shit out of my ass. <laughs> yeah, but this is, it's funny. It's like, oh my God. Yeah. Uh, he is, hold on. The Cochrane Medal of Excellence, the Grand Narkite Order of Tactics, the Karagite Order of Heroism, the Legion of Honor, the Palm Leaf of Axnar, Peace Mission. <laughs> I'm just going... And then he's, and then Sloan just like stops. He's like, I think, I think we've heard enough. He's like, no, no, please keep going. And, and, uh, uh, oh, well, thank you for the, uh, game. It. Thank you for, he threw 10, he threw a thousand pennies on my, on my, uh, t Twitch hey, channel. Hey, everybody that's, that's start dropping bucks. pennies. 10, if, if you want to hear more medals, give him more money. Um, more medals, everyone. More medals. More, more. more. Starfleet more Extended medals. Tour Ribbon. Starfleet Medal of Commendation. Starfleet Medal of Valor. <laughs> <laughs> Starfleet Silver Palm. Starfleet Surgeon. <laughs> no, you didn't Starfleet get that one. There's a uh, order off the palm. Yeah. Great movie. And then he just sort of, uh, like, Sloan just kind of just puts his hands in his head, and he just goes like, How did you pull all of that off? Balls. <laughs> uh, and, and Commodore Decker just goes, I, that's fine. I, we know he has a lot of medals. Uh, please have a seat, sir. And everyone has a seat. <laughs> people, people want the medals, man. I uh, want to hear that. Uh, that's that's pretty much it. Like, if I keep giving you medals, there's none of it's it, it, court, You just start looking around your room. Corsair, <laughs> 70. Yeah, uh, uh, the Legate's Crest of Valor for Cardassia. <laughs> <laughs> the Praetor Call Us Award from Romulus. <laughs> oh, 
the mic of hard lemonade metal. <laughs> Eight a hundred steaks in one sitting. <laughs> Five dollar taco challenge That's at Taco great. Bell metal. The Taco Bell Award of Excellence. <laughs> Taco Bell Award of Baja Blast. <laughs> uh, all right. So all accommodations are listed. Captain's shirt is clearly covered in decorations from war and his battles uh, among the stars. I'm holding a few that don't fit on his coat. Now, if you guys don't realize this, at least in character, this guy in front of you, you probably realize this guy was pretty good at, as a captain before. This proves that he was incredibly impressive uh, in terms of being a Once captain. Once upon it makes a time. Yeah, and so you have to ask yourselves, how the fuck did he get up on this ship? What did he do? Um, so that's something I want you guys to think about when you're in character as well. Um, so you hear all of this stuff, and everyone's just like, all right, please take a seat. Captain, we are going to go ahead and list the charges, and we're going to hear your... Well, we're going to hear what you have to say about yourself. Yeah, go ahead. Captain, you're being charged with dereliction of duty. You're mm -hmm. being charged with, uh, shit, I help. I didn't, I wrote them down and I fucking closed it. <laughs> so, hold on one second. I'm sorry. I love to think that's what he's saying right now. I wrote it down. <laughs> yeah. What's my <laughs> bad? <laughs> I really did, and then I fucked it up. Oh, uh, no, I fucking copy-pasted over it. No, I wrote all this earlier. Dereliction of duty. Undo. Yeah, uh, hold on one second. Yeah. No, 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 I got it, I got it. Uh, dereliction of duty, assault on a fellow officer, uh, violating the prime directive, uh, violating direct orders from Starfleet Command. How do you plead? No. No what? No. Not guilty, or what is no? He stands up, and he goes, you guys are checking little boxes on pieces of paper, because you got to. And then two, two security officers grab you by the arm and they sit you back down. And he's like, Captain, I want to remind you that this is not a joke. This could be the end of your career. And most likely you'll be going away for a very long time if these charges he are... He just starts laughing. Uh, and I'm you hear a riot go, boo! <laughs> and he, he just starts laughing because he's like, thank fuck, finally I can retire. <laughs> Could I have told the captain about the uh, scheme with my cousin beforehand? So, like, in any second now, it's like, don't answer that question. As some fat tellerite comes strolling. The no, no, not yet. The tellerite, I, you rolled really good on that. The tellerite's almost there. Um, so, yeah, you just hear Decker go, please be quiet. Otherwise, I'll have all of you removed. Now, okay. Captain. Okay. Captain stalling. <laughs> Jack would like to see him try. Wait, why, oh, why haven't even said anything yet? What the hell? Not yet. Well, everyone else is clapping You're and doing all this weird shit. Accessory. Yeah. I'm just sitting here. Wow. Fucking Captain. Use of power right there. Captain, we're going to go. We're going to go through the list, and we're going to question your mission here, and you're going to answer us correctly, and it will be on record. <sighs> Where do we start? And Sloane gets up. Well, Captain, let's start with the easiest of all of them. You assaulted a fellow officer while on duty. Is this true? Uh, what time are we referring to? Well, while you're on this mission. I'm not going to refer to anything prior, uh, just yet. I, I, I wish to know who is uh, making charges against my person. Currently making charges against your person? Well, that's quite a long list. I don't think the court has time for that. I will just No, no. If if I've assaulted someone, I want to know whom. And he looks over at the Tellerite and he points and he's like, "Isn't it true you threw a bottle at that man's head?" Uh, yeah, that is Tellerite custom. And he points over the Tellerite and he asks you to stand up. "Is it true in Tellerite customs to throw bottles at each other on duty?" Are you suggesting that we drink... Answer the question, yes or no. Um, oh, how um, dare you insult my cultural Either heritage. you answer the question or we'll have you dragged out. And just as he's saying that, a guy bursts in. He's like, answer no questions. Not without consulting me first. <laughs> and then he goes, who the hell is this? And I go, yay. Crack, you made it. 
<laughs> like, I am crack and I represent oh, these no, fools. And you will ask all questions to me. And then he looks over at you, uh, over, he walks over to the group and he goes, I've read your logs. You all are on deep shit. Just let, listen to me and everything will be okay. Which logs? You know, it's at this point where, like, Ross is like, oh, it's gonna be one of those days. And he just pulls out, like, a package of crackers and starts eating. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> He and, has a random helmet-shaped box with fish cakes in it. And then he wa Crack walks over, over to the captain, and he's like, So you're the full captain. crossover, people. You wouldn't get it. He walks over to the captain, and he's like, So you're the full captain that let this stupid group of idiots into the wrong way, right? Captain? Yes. The captain's gone! <gasps> no, sorry. It, yeah. it, it, it stuttered for a second. Go ahead. No, 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 I said, uh, he, he just walks over, he's like, so you're the foolish captain who's led this merry crew of idiots. He looks at the Tellarite, and he goes, fuck you, fuck your face, fuck your family, you're ugly as shit, now get on with your goddamn job. And then he laughs, and he <laughs> pats you on the shoulder, he's like, you would do well on Tellar. And then he, he goes, turns yeah, I know, I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> to answer your question. He would say, I almost imagined he would say, like, yeah, marriage is two and three, move on. Yeah, he, to, <laughs> to answer your question, yes, it is custom on Tellar to throw things as a sign of friendship. While on duty, he puts his finger up, uh, one of his three fingers, and Sloane just sighs heavily, and he's like, <sighs> and Decker's like, I won't have this turned into a circus, Captain. And Crack just looks over at you and he's like, Don't worry, it's going to be one hell of a show, I guarantee it. <laughs> and he says, If you're trying to say the customs of honored Federation members are a circus, I'm afraid you won't do well in a multinational uh, group such as the Federation. You'd know that <laughs> if you were out in Spain. Oh, that's making fun of Boulder. Yeah, mm. and Captain has always respected Goran culture. Yes. <laughs> I res I, and then I Decker just slams the thing down. He's like, "All right, all right, you've made your point." So, Sloan, if you will continue with your interrogation. Very well. So, you're saying that it is custom to throw a bottle at someone's head. Uh, a Tellarite's head. I see. Is it also? customary for a captain to order a crewmate to discipline a soldier by breaking his spine Fuck. and everyone in the fucking everyone in the thing just goes uh the logs uh th that was and he just says quiet good. i was asking the qu captain a question uh, Ross is and the I'm crack sorry, goes to I'm your ear captain and he's like the captain captain he goes to your ear captain and he's like what what are you what is he talking about loudly eating crackers <laughs> 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 yeah, Crack's asking, like, what, what's he talking about? Uh, he, he whispers to Crack, and he's like, Daniel. Who is Daniel's? Da Daniel's head. Of the oh, I see, I see. My client crunch, is crunch. currently unable to recall any such orders. He was under duress. Isn't that correct, Captain? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> And Sloane's like, I find that, paper. well, considering how much he drinks, I'm not really that surprised. And then he turns over to the rest of the crew. You know, it isn't really customary to have someone brought out in front of the rest of the crew like this, but since we are kind of shorthanded, we have to kind of... I told what? someone to kill Daniels. Crunch, crunch, yeah. <laughs> Jesse eats the crackers. What? He's just like, oh shit, I'm going to jail. Well, Daniel fortunately for paper, you... But he clings to life. Fortunately for the court, I do happen to have the first officer's log. Hmm. And it reads... Hold on. It is okay. I am confident he cannot read. Let's start <laughs> out here with the first officer's log. And Captain, you can... Chime in at any time, or any of you for that matter, since this is a very big room. This is Commander Ross Campbell of the USS Esses. Actually, no, Campbell, you're reading this in your voice. I'm not reading your shit. I'm doing like five oh, characters at once. His yeah. log or the log I sent him? The one, the one you sent me, he's going to read that. Okay. Yeah. I sent uh, it to him as well. Okay. Yeah, let me open oh, yeah, read the thing that he sent you. Well, the thing I sent you? 
Yeah. All right. First officer's log. This is Commander Ross Campbell of the USS S's. I can't really tell. The plaque on the bridge was broken and faded, but we managed to fix it. Starfleet has seen fit to transfer me to this proud scat. What the? Due to my skill set, I'm only. <laughs> I'm just the only one left in Starfleet, not afraid to stand up for my crew with my life. I'll be signing off when I have to make the round. <laughs> and he like looks over at the oh I like what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> 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 Back at the log, okay. Oh my god, this Second is log. <laughs> I have made contact with Captain Horatio and have subsequently figured out how best to best to serve him. Respond <laughs> the bridge with quick the The captain is a proud man who serves with great authority and I aspire to reach his rank someday. <laughs> Looks back at the Orion again. <laughs> He seems like an alright guy. Looks back again. <laughs> if he ever wants to share a drink with me, I would be proud. Shakes his head. No. <laughs> uh, now keep in mind, everyone can see you, so be careful with all the head nods and stuff. Third bug, barely out of port and already a job to do. Was walking the halls on patrol. When I started getting a hail, when Engineer Daniels was contacting me personally, requesting I come assist with engineering, they didn't an extra hand. I told him I was on the way and headed toward the elevator. While there was some trouble with the turbo lift, Daniels quickly fixed it. Upon arrivals, Daniels took me on a quick tour of engineering. Unfortunately, Daniels had an accident due to poor tool placement and caused him to gain a broken spine. I knew the CMO Sorry. was also help. It's okay, buddy. Was also helping with engineering, so I assisted Daniels into a secure position in a seat and left him to be handled by professionals. And then he just sort of stops you right there, and he's like, "Hold, hold on." Are you sure that's what happened? With, like, the straightest face ever, yes. Hmm. Continue. Right, fourth log. The day started out pretty normal until we got some strange distress signal. Something strange was happening. I didn't really pay too much attention to it. I had something better to focus on. I received a call from the bridge. Orion, the green, handsome Orion who handles... I'm gonna fuck Candace <laughs> communication with the <laughs> authority who informed me the captain was sending in a boarding party to a potentially hostile ship. He's an amazing person and a friend I trust de uh, dearly. Uh, s sorry, I'm <laughs> crackers stuck to my stuck to the roof of my mouth. Can I get, can I get a glass of water, please? And and uh, Decker just shakes his head no. Dick. Uh, I mean, uh, offered to help me in any times of need, and I appreciate it. Anyways, apparently the situation, or the station rather, had some sort of effect where it was pulling in ships from everywhere. Later we found out the crew of said ships would go, go mad. Anyways, yeah. I went over with the head engineer and the CMO. Things were fine until we got to the elevator. It stopped before reaching the intended floor of the bridge. I, of course, would not let that stop me, so I pried open the door, saw a man there, and I engaged him in conversation. He refused to open the door, so I was able to talk him down, and he opened the door. A sudden <laughs> shake of the ship caused him to fall and hit his head. It made a loud noise as he smacked into the console in front of him. And then uh, Sloane just smiles, and he goes, Are you absolutely sure that was the chain of events that happened? As I recall, yes. And he looks over at the, uh, the rest of the council, and he goes like, Let it be known, this is exactly what he says. Please continue. I'm going to fucking jail. <laughs> Keep going. After that, there was gumshoe work. Told the captain what I found. He ordered me to board the station next. I took the second officer with me to investigate. Didn't find anything too strange. However, people were acting very off. They were all hunting for some kind of treasure. Meanwhile, the station started exploding. I tried to find the engineering room. Radiation levels were continuing to rise, so I figured I'd fix that first. No luck. There was a breach into space. Idly, I wondered if we would survive the vacuum of space as we moved into the room to plug the hole long enough for me and the crew to fix the engine. <laughs> then I turned around as the CMO engineer and second officer were beamed back aboard the S's, presumably. I scoured the ship, uh, I scoured the station looking for escape pods, I tried contacting the bridge multiple times and got no answer. Then, something came over me. I had picked up a map and I could feel the urge to look for the treasure steadily rising. And Sloan just stops you right there, I'm sorry, you said something came over you? It was like an urge. I Once I started looking at the map, I just, I wanted to find that treasure. So you're telling the council that your judgment was impaired. Mm. And then Crack just looks over and he's like, I object. And if you'll, if I, you'll let me finish reading, you'll see that it wasn't. And, 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 uh, 
uh, Decker just kind of looks over at the uh, uh, Vulcan guy, and he, they both like nod. He's like, continue, first officer. All right. Sloan looks defeated. I, <laughs> I tried to put the map down, but couldn't, so I did the only thing I could think of. I ate the map as a last resort. I felt my mind clear up instantly and finally managed to get in contact with Orion. A few minutes later, I was beamed back aboard. I took a few seconds to relax, and then Orion came into the teleportation room. A bit confusing. He usually never leaves his chair. I asked him what he was doing. He gave me the finger guns and told me he was going to look for the treasure. I was able to subdue his crazy behavior with a stun from my phaser. He's a cool guy. Wait, are you saying that the communication <laughs> officer was also impaired? Yeah, uh... But... 30 it, seconds. It was really, it was really, uh, the treasure was And Crack really just cool goes, you head. don't have to answer his question. This inquiry is strictly for the captain and, and currently the first officer who's speaking. You got it. And, uh, the, made, the made a, uh, Commodore Chief Decker just, officer. Commodore Decker just goes, Sloan, let the man finish speaking and then we'll get to the heart of the issue and Sloan looks kind of like all right all right puts his hands up and he just says gives you the please continue <clears throat> Daniel still has a broken spine I hope the CMO finds a way to fix it soon uh CMO is what sixth exactly law. uh what chief medical officer okay cool I just want to clarify that sixth log if I was more hermetic uh poetic man I'd say today started in a different place it didn't though it started the same place it has for the past week <laughs> on this proud ship <laughs> I got a call that we had finally reached our objective what the fucking murder you did <laughs> <laughs> his arms slowly draped around me oh keep I, going. I, I love my fanfic body. hey my fanfic goes into my other games sir <laughs> Sorry. Our objective was to go to some nebula and retrieve a starship, the Zukov. We were finally here. However, the bridge called me, informed me there was some vagrant on the other bridge, currently on comms and screens, arguing about it being his ship. Also, the weapons were coming online, so off I went. I beamed over, now back in full riot gear. I saw the man, tattered clothing, and yelling. He turned around upon noticing me and said, and I quote, Who the fuck are you? <laughs> End quote. <laughs> I engaged in standard Starfleet security operations. I warned him to not resist, but was forced to restrain him. Outstanding work. All right. Do you want to keep going? Uh, did, yeah, do you want me to? I'm yeah, yeah. Almost done. All right. Yeah, you're almost done. Well, it would have been if the ship didn't rock and throw me and the man across the room. My fall was stopped by the man, and I felt a spine snap. Time was short, and I had to make it out alive as two dead bodies weren't an option. Klingon showed up. I wasn't sure what was going on, but I did know one thing. Well, two things. One, the ship was slowly spinning. Two, I could get a phaser bank online. I contacted Orion, telling him this. Then the captain came on, telling me they were going to throw the nasal that had ripped off of the ship. See, we had a Tellerite on board, who I am sure is uh, quite capable, or who I am sure is responsible for that predicament. And he was the one who put forward the plan. So, I waited for the Zukov to spin around and get aligned just right, and in that moment, the second commander hucked the nasal at the Klingon ship. I fired the first shot, propelling it into the warship, the second detonating the nasal and sending their ship spinning off to god knows where. Anyways, in the fighting, it was decided the damage that the Zukov was, had obtained was now too great, thus we decided to tow the Klingons out. Uh, also, one of our engineers lost their boulder in the teleporter by playing around in the nebula with it. Turns out it was in the meeting room. Nice. And, and, uh... It the uh, Decker just looks over and he's like, Boulder? Boulder, Captain? What's... Uh, it's standard foreign uh, operating equipment. Slar will hold up Boulder! Boulder! Yeah, and yeah the, um, the, the Captain will say, my multicultural crew has their own customs and I don't judge them for it because we are a federation of equal. Of course. Continue, I'm sorry. Oh, Captain. <laughs> my Captain. And you did... did now, let me ask you something, Diggs. Did you do the whole thing or where did you stop? I did the whole thing. Oh, yeah. Keep going, then. Uh, there wasn't much editing needed for the, sec the last part, but yeah. Yeah. Seventh log. Found some interesting stuff in the Zukov's hole, the cryopod. The human inside it, even. We decided to take it to midday, open it up, and out screaming came this German fellow. I had to uh, I had to hunt him down. We fought a little. He broke my wrist, but it was an even fight. Anyways, we got that sorted out, found another problem. Turns out the Klingons had somehow overridden our transponder. So we were identifying as one of their warships. Bad news was that there was a clan fleet and a star fleet fleet on their way. Yeah. And both wanted us dead. The good news was that I discovered we had an Italian chef. He made good food. 
<laughs> Poor chef. Yeah. He had some great meatballs. Every, just somebody just did, does like the, you know, like rest in peace, you know, the fucking <laughs> kiss lips. Adios mio. Wait, yeah. Our thing. Yeah. Captain Horatio called us onto the bridge. My team with the Italian was a search cargo, which had suspiciously gone dark. The German and our two Gorn officers were to go to the Klingon ship and subdue every last person on it and fix whatever was causing the false signal. Okay, I had to make sure you actually edited that part, dang. <laughs> I did. I felt like pointing out that the captain was sending a German we didn't know to assist in dealing with the other ship, but figured it'd be funnier not to. Irony. Oh, you didn't edit that part. Anyways, off the cargo we went wasn't until we got to the Well, the irony part is you something. just sent someone who just randomly was frozen on your ship over to deal with something. But yeah, go ahead. Yes, that was the he, irony He was under Grick uh, watch. Yes. And uh, that is all I had time to write down before docking with the station. I apologize. That's quite all right. You may have a seat now. And he turns back to the captain. He's like, sounds As like... he sits down out of his other pocket, he pulls out, like, one of those Capri Sun juice bags. You know, Slar actually hands you a drink. Oh, sure. sure. Uh, Slar will pick up the <laughs> older open hatch and produce one glass <laughs> and begin to but, pour... Uh, and I like that Dr. <laughs> Jekyll's watching and he's having an aneurysm for procedures being broken. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> this well, is... he he can come on later as a lawyer, all right? Yeah, bonk, I. Bonk. So uh, you're telling. So basically, uh, you're you get a drink from Slar, and uh, the the council doesn't care what you guys are really drinking or anything because this is a very like short. Yeah, but... In that case, it's a uh, it's, it's apple whiskey. Hmm. Anybody else drink? Drink? Anybody? Boulder. Anyway. Hey, uh, so, so Sloan just sits down and he's like, so it's true, Captain. You had quite the adventure. Yeah. In and out, 20 minute adventure. <laughs> How many fingers? And it seems like your crew has done a very good job covering the you up and then Crack just goes, that is in, you cannot say that I object. And, uh, and, uh, Decker just turns over to, uh, Sloan. He's like, you have no evidence of tampering, do you? No, sir, I don't. But let's be honest oh, yeah. here. Let's see what Sorry. the chief medical officer had to say about this entire situation. Mr. Grikek, is it? I am Grikek, yes. Grikek, could you tell us in your log what it's... Uh, could you read from your log for the rest of us, please? I'll send it to you. Because it was a while ago since you sent me that. Shit. <laughs> Listen, I'm. I did my best. Yeah. No, it's okay, buddy. You tried. Pat's I missed children. one fucking roll, and now the now this Gorn's about to get us thrown in. <laughs> oh, it, it's all right. I'll, I'll take the fall. No, uh, you are going to read about uh two two paragraphs from it, and that's it. That's all. Uh, Just was... tell us about the boulder. No, you can read. You yeah. can read two paragraphs from it, but that's it. That's because those rolls you did were the ones that you were able to recover. Oh, okay. So, Grikek, read two paragraphs, please. I pick two. Yes, I'll let you pick any that you want oh, to. God. <laughs> but you have to read the whole paragraph. You can't skip anything. And and uh, Sloan knows that this is only a partial log, so. Sorry, just glancing over to remember what all I. <laughs> You're just looking over the. This log is is quite garbled. Uh, uh needs a moment to read. Uh, Griquette, give me a, excuse me, um, give me a daring and command roll, please. Complication three, challenge dice two, excuse me. Uh, and Decker just goes, just please read. Uh, 
W- witnessed Ensign Daniels suffer injury while assigned to engineering duty. Uh, Daniels is extremely prone to injury, even for a human. The most rudimentary spine-focused treatments rendered him unresponsive for an extended period. Uh, despite study of human maintenance, their fragility proves a difficulty. The, the ship responds more positively to similar treatments, but thus the issue must lie with the humans themselves. The performance of SLAR in engineering warrants commendation. Any seeming yes. shortcomings are the result of understaffing and the inability of human crew members to grasp even the basics of boulder-based maintenance techniques. How Starfleet vessels operate without ward engineers is a mystery. Okay. Oh my god, I just realized why you didn't fix Daniels. You didn't use the boulder. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> anyway, yeah, Boulders don't... for extremist situations. Don't, don't incriminate anybody just yet. Um, anyway, uh... Just yet. <laughs> Anything else you want to add to that? Uh, Quick hack? I'm sorry, I'm having trouble reading for some reason. Do you want to just use that as your defense? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Corn can't read. Pre- presence on the Klingon vessel was requested. Uh, several Klingon subjects were observed and treatment was administrated, uh, administered. Unfortunately, centrifuge-induced uh, gelatinitude prevented full recovery, despite extensive percussive treatment. The cryogenic subject was present and was observed to turn somewhat green during this treatment. Uh, further study must be conducted into whether Klingons are a vector for rabies or any other disease. Until then, careful observation of crew will continue. The Klingon ship was incapacitated, repaired, commandeered, and then piloted. All of these events appear to have been the result of miraculous luck and not existing skill or experience with Klingon technology or piloting. And Sloan just goes, very well. And he marks something down in his note. He's like, all right. So you're saying that you used percussive uh, measures. Could you explain to us how this works? Allow me to demonstrate. Just allow me to demonstrate. You, and you can demonstrate if you would like. He uh, he he demonstrates by taking the boulder and smashing Sloan flat. <laughs> <laughs> right so check in bill in mail. No, just in words. How exactly uh, did you treat Daniels? Daniels. Uh, D- Daniels had suffered a uh, severe spine misalignment. How did that and, happen? Uh, um. And and crack just it, it, it goes was. like what is the point of all of this questions and then uh, Commodore Decker just goes just let the man finish court. As, well, as, well, as a medical well, officer, my my job is not to ask how the um, injury was sustained, only to uh, understand and fix. So, what do you think happened to Daniels? Just if you were to speculate, and then Crack goes like, "This is absurd. You can't just ask a man to speculate. That would incriminate him." And then. That's when, uh, uh, if 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 I may give my uh, opinion as a chief medical officer, and Crack looks uh, back at you, and he just go, he starts shaking his head, but you can do it anyway. D- Daniel's is made of paper. Daniel's is extremely fragile, even for a human. He he shatters at the slightest touch. He's a very difficult patient to keep health and clumsy. Uh, very clumsy. It, it, injuries to him should not be um, treated as serious. Uh, matters, and I would highly recommend that uh, he be reassigned to a much less physically demanding position. Hmm, how interesting. You would say that Daniels is in an incapacitated uh, position and is unable to do his job anymore, then? Um, I, I am not sure he was able to do his job in the first place. <laughs> he, he he did his best, but his he continually suffered injuries so uh, as you're saying that sloan just smiles and he goes well it's interesting because well we have the man here uh you can bring him in now and then like right behind uh the doors open up and daniel comes rolling in on like a chair just like the one pike had in that episode and he's just sitting there like griquette cracks his knuckles and then it's just like Crewman Daniels like that blowjob sign. is unable to speak for himself. Unfortunately, 
He can only speak in yes or no with beeps. Isn't that right, Daniels? Thank oh, you. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Someone hack him. <laughs> this is a shadow run. We can't do it. Freaking brute force it right now. I know all about it. There's a guy named Master Computer. He, he has our back. Uh, you know, oh, while man. While I'm eating my crackers, I'm going to be staring right at Daniels. Yeah, you're like sweats heavily. <laughs> I'm You're the only person in the room of... who's like whose Starfleet shirt is like drenched. <laughs> I'm gonna be like rubbing my nipples <laughs> at him. Fuck, fuck. Uh, and then he goes. Choose crackers loudly. I'll go to jail. Crewman Daniels. I know that you are in a very precarious situation, and I won't have you stay here for too long. The doctors are obviously need to tend to you, but could you? Good luck. Could you tell us? Could you point to us in in whatever way you can to the man point. who put you in this position? And then Daniels turns around like, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> and then he just looks right over at Ross with his eyes, and you just hear. <laughs> so you're saying? Come on! I smile at him. Is that one yes is, or is no? The... You're saying is this one or two? <laughs> he's just looking right over at, at Orion. You're pointing at Orion. I'll shake my head. Yes. No, no he's he's like, uh, was that was that was that Slar? Uh, <laughs> obviously, it must Daniels, be. Yeah. Don't do this. Yeah, yeah. Then, <laughs> then he no. Oh, you must mean the first officer. Ah, see, there it is. Uh, if 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 Gurkak may interject. Not yet. Are, uh, is, please have a is, seat. Is the... <laughs> yeah, he's not. He's he's he just tells you to have a seat, and uh, mm. he just walks over, and Sloane goes. Uh, so you're saying that you were assaulted by the first officer? Is that correct? And if you were assaulted by the first officer, what could it have been for? Oh, that's right. Daniels told us while he was in operation. You see, Daniels was assaulted by Chris. Ross Campbell. For merely using the communication wait, 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 wait. device. Hold on there, Sloan. You just said that he couldn't talk. How I did he tell you? You said he can only answer in yes or no. Well, Are currently, you... while he was in... I, I think he coached the answers. Yeah. <laughs> Ask, was he conscious while he was being operated no, on? No, no. If, if, if he was being operated on... If I may it. interject, as I wanted to earlier, I question I will whether allow Daniels it. is... If da I question whether Daniels is in sound state of mind, given his uh, severe injuries and <laughs> his uh, obvious predilection to serious injury. Yeah, and the he, captain he's is going to say. He lost a game of strip poker with me. I don't think he his uh his whatever he says can be trusted. <laughs> the Daniel, the captain say Daniels couldn't do his job. Now he can't even stand. Are you sure he should even be giving uh, any sort of? <laughs> You. Real, real <laughs> evidence here. Yeah. Um. Hold on one sec. And uh, <laughs> Gork, at, uh, to see your medical. You know, uh, Campbell will look towards the uh, the judge or the leading tribunal here. He's like, "Is this is this a trial or a witch hunt? What's going on here?" Captain, yeah, can you give um, me can you give me a, uh, a roll for that one? Um. Because I want to see if you can change their mind. Do me a uh, insight and command roll. Sure. Steven Cratter now change. Yeah, mind. complication Please range. Let me do a presence. Complication <laughs> range two. Or you can use your focus. Challenge dice two. One, one second. Let me let me open that character. So you're saying a what roll? Uh, insight command. And challenge uh, complication two and yeah. task roll one. Uh, no, just leave the task rolls it is. You're just gonna do a challenge of two. Sure. Malachi points out something. The defense attorney was not there during the interview. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, you... <laughs> uh, yeah, right. the, the captain The captain also gained you guys the momentum, which you guys can use. Uh, so, did so I, I was like... When I was doing those logs? So I was like, counter-opinion, he's crippled, and everyone was like, yeah, yeah, this is good. Yeah, yeah, and that's when the, that's when the Vulcan male, uh, who had just been sitting there... Good point. Uh, just pipes and he's like, it would be quite illogical to take the, uh, to take the, oh man, what's the fucking word now? Um, to take the testimony of the man, uh, who is currently sitting in a very delirious state. 
Hell yeah, you said you said for the record, uh, how many birds of prey has uh, Mister Sloan recovered for the Federation? And and uh, Commodore Decker, not that one. Just sort of knocks on the desk. He goes, Captain, please. This isn't no, a dick no, measuring for, contest. No, no, for the record, I would like that known. And Sloan just <laughs> Sloan looks down. He goes, like I have not ever retrieved anything so heroic, and uh, I would never for, try for to the take record, that. How many? How many? Uh, Birds of Prey has a shitty captain of a garbage scow uh, recovered, just for the record. And Sloan just goes, can we continue, Captain? Or uh, Commodore? For, for the record, this is very formal, sir. You've charged me. I, I want this to be as part of the record, please. Very well. According to Starfleet record, no garbage scow has ever captured an enemy ship other than to tow it out of commission, if it's out of commission. But we oh. did! Woo! Yeah, and, and he goes, uh, re record stand. And he looks at... <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I high-five with Ryan. And, and then he, he looks over at Daniels and he goes, You're still a disappointment. <laughs> so, and, Never and, and, your dick again. Daniels, can, Daniels can barely follow orders. Oh, he agreed. Yeah. As, as they wheel his sad ass out of there, I'm just going to say, yeah. Get well soon, Daniels. No, Daniels is, Daniels is wheeled to the corner of the room. So he can watch the <laughs> proceedings, and people just sort I'm of like start leave him pushing there. Pushing Ross slowly towards that corner. Yeah, um, and then Sloane goes like, "Well, it's clear to me that you allowed one of your officers to assault another one under your command. Do you accept this responsibility?" He yeah, says that, and he, Crack has said, it. And Crack just goes, "Answer it to the. I don't care. Just do however you want." Yeah, it, he goes. Perhaps some men are overzealous. But I have the crew that Starfleet gave me, and they're not perfect, but they Woo! get shit done. <laughs> there is a ship we got out there that may shorten this war and might help us win it, and we got it intact. This is a ship of misfits, but we got it done. Are there any other questions, or can I get the fuck back to work? Not just yet. We have just a couple of more things. Sure. Whatever. <sighs> Very well. Thank you very much. You may have a seat, Chief Medical Officer. And where's the other one? Daniel, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the chair has a toilet on it. Nice. The chair is. Dude, they the all do. Starfleet. Did we get those for the chair. bridge? Oh, yours doesn't have one. Uh, we're going to... You don't allow Grakek on the bridge. You're always <laughs> welcome in my seat, buddy. We're going to ask uh, the chief engineer to read his log, what's left of it. God. Uh, damn why it. do you all... I'm like looking around going, why do you all keep logs? <laughs> Order believes in your what star. I, let me tell you, Orion has no logs. <laughs> He's too busy making everyone else's logs. Yes. Uh, you may pick two paragraphs you can read from there. God, it's like Beans Game all over uh, again. I haven't received, I'm sorry, anything. Yeah, you did. Where are I supposed to find this? Hold on, I'll send it to you on, you wrote uh, it. Oh, okay, so it's not been edited. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. No, he did not pass, so you don't get an edit. The only person who got an edited log was Ross, and you're all very fucking lucky for that, too, because... <laughs> He had a choice. He could have picked anybody's log, and he picked Ross's, which was the most incriminating yeah, of everyone. Yeah, he's the biggest racist. It would have been the worst <laughs> thing to show people. <laughs> the moment he looked at Orion when they met, he's all, like, fucking greenback, and he walked away, and I'm like, whoa! I didn't even know that was a space insult. What the fuck? Yeah, I'm not... Yeah, so clearly you guys are dealing with a kangaroo court here, but uh, Chief... Me Chief... Uh, Engineer's log. Pick two paragraphs in there to read. Okay. And and don't and don't try to uh, rewrite anything because they already read it. They just want to hear. I just want to hear from your own voice. Uh. Okay. Well. Yes, I'm Slar, Chief Engineer. Uh. Well, this is a dot and by Boulder, so important. Uh. Beginning. Base. I do not have time to write you a short log, so I shall write you a long one. <laughs> As one of two guard members of crew, I realize 
Okay, the problem with me reading this is that it keeps hitting the, <laughs> my button for... Uh, hold on, one sec. Oh, that's right, because you have, you've pushed the talk on one of your back and forward buttons, I'm guessing. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. If Daniels gets put back on the crew, we're going to fuck him up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take his dick off and wear it around as a necklace. No, we're going to well, just like take the motor controls out of his chair and then ramp him up and ramp the inputs up to like 100 times. So he like tries to go across the room and just scrapes off the wall at 100 miles an hour down the hallway. And we're like, Daniels, what are you doing? You're a rocket chair from Goon. <laughs> I'm going to finish the job. I am taken back. Thank you. Sorry for delay. I am taken back to the writings of Herman Melville and other nautical greats when I comment on the absolute commitment of the captain to stay on the mission, no matter the cost to crew, reputation, or regulation. He is a man of honor and action, and, and with a firm backhand that goes by the name of Commander Ross, <laughs> and the voice of a green angel, Orion, the Orion. Thank you. <laughs> I started just rubbing myself. I, Please. that is awkward. Uh, <laughs> he covers Boulder. I am reminded of my own family. <laughs> Mother and father would be proud of their no-nonsense approach of ensuring communication lines are appropriately preserved for emergencies only, and their repeated firm encouragements have allowed friends and crew member uh, Krakek, who also should receive accommodation, continual sharpening of his medical skills. Wow. And and Sloan just kind of looks down. He's like, "Are you done?" No, I have much more compliments for Captain. That's well as quite all right. Please have a seat. I am already seated. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were still standing. I thought you were standing. No, they they have a built-in seat. It's their tail. Oh, okay. Fair <laughs> enough. Sitting on boulder. Sitting on boulder. Um, Task for today. One, buff boulder. Two, I get second paragraph. <laughs> Try and repair Captain's fridge. <laughs> um. Okay, so... <laughs> He's like, Stone just goes, It's clear, Captain, that your crew is watching very carefully for you. And we here. No, at I am just loyal. Uh, yes, and and here at Starfleet, we're not here to just throw throw you in prison and toss away the key. Of course not. That would be a complete waste of a man of your abilities. As you said to me earlier while we were in the office, I'm just going to write this down on paper, and you're going to go back out onto the ship and do something else. Right? Is that correct? Yeah. <sighs> Well, I have a couple of other logs I can read from, but let's just cut to the chase here. Clearly really your quick, crew... I just want to say something, crew. Yeah, go ahead. I, I like asked you, like, hey, how's the writing? Oh, it's really great! I love it! And I just realized, no, you were making... You were giving me rope to hang myself with later. I hate you. <laughs> 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 well, you know, here's the thing. I did that for everybody. I did that for everybody. Yeah. To be yeah. fair, everybody had to do that. However, I was not. No, because you don't. The thing is, you handle all the logs. You're too busy writing your own. I did. I wanted to give you the chance to edit as many of them as you could, but the problem was everyone kind of sent it to me like mostly today, and then Tex wasn't able to write it. So we're just gonna assume that it was yeah, lost. Yeah, that, that's my bad. I I apologize. Everyone in chat can hate me. It. No, no, you're fine. It will just say I'll it was lost. I guess we're under heavy attack. So, uh, Sloan goes like, but before we, well, before we sentence or pass a verdict, and Commodore just goes, we're not passing any verdicts just yet. Sloan, don't jump ahead of us. He's like, of course, of course. What I'd like to do is something a little unconventional, but not too unfamiliar for Starfleet, is to bring forth one witness that I don't think anybody here can say has a valuable, has any sort of allegiance to the captain. And everyone kind of looks around captain the room. Stanley. But I've already talked, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's <laughs> looking around the room. And he walks over to Slar. And then he's yes. like, may I, will you bring Boulder up to the stand, uh, please? Uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Not Boulder. Uh, okay. So Slar will go over, pick Throw up the uniform, uh, the stand. Throw it at him. You might be wondering Slar. why we asked Captain Vorak here on the council. Captain Vorak is 
capable of doing what's called a Vulcan mind meld. He's gonna become a boulder. What the heck? Surely boulder is loyal, Slar. We're gonna you find out today, us. aren't we? So the Vulcan gets up and nods, and he's like, they kill the Vulcan. He's like, this is the first time I've ever cons uh, done something like this, so results will most likely vary. And then he places his hands onto uh, Boulder, and he goes like, my mind to your mind, our thoughts together as one. Your so mind to Sounds my hard. mind. It is a Boulder. Yo, Kek, we should try this later. Hell yes. And then, right in the middle of that, he just, like, looks up. And then he looks over at Slar. And then he looks slightly disgusted. Then he's back over to the captain. And then the... the <laughs> Slar blushes. <laughs> then he's looking around the room. And he's just looking completely disturbed by the images that are flashing before his eyes. And then he releases it. He looks out of wind, out of breath. And then he composes himself. And he looks back up, and he's like, I have seen many things have happened aboard the Essis. And then Sloane's like, yes, what did you see? I have seen things that, well, I don't think I can ever forget. But I have not seen anything that can incriminate the captain. And that's when Sloane goes, that's bull... And then he just looks yeah! like, yeah, and that's, that's when he's just like, but then he, the Vulcan looks back over at Slar and he's like, I would recommend that you would find someone of your own species next time. The boulder is, uh, you have too much alone time. And then he just sits down looking really <laughs> uncomfortable. You do not know me. You do not get to judge me. Snap, snap, snap. Yeah. Mars love boulder. So that's why he never accepts my advances. Yeah, and then Sloan just looks completely like... He just looks fed up. He's just like, this is... I... I would have... Camp is, like, holding both of his arms out, like, the slur is, like, pointing him, like, you see? You see? <laughs> this is what I do. Oop. Um, and then that's when he, like, sits back down. He's just like, well... Well, there's still the charge of him being insubordinate, and then that's when Commodore Decker just goes like, "All right, I think we've, I think we've all heard enough here. We'll adjourn for now, uh, and it'll, when we do reconvene, it'll just be the captain and uh, the rest of us here. The rest of the crew can are, uh, wait outside. Are duels still accepted in Starfleet? No. Damn, I was gonna beat <laughs> phaser <out>. duels. <laughs> Pull the phaser from my pocket. I challenge you to a duel. All right. Uh, yeah, that, that won't happen. There's no pocket. Yeah, um, I am the pocket. Anyway, yeah. So it convenes the the Commodore uh, and the Vulcan is just sitting there. The Vulcan looks like it's trying its best to hide its emotions, but uh, clearly, so whatever that you and Boulder do with each other is deeply disturbed. The Vulcan. <laughs> To a point where it's almost like he's tra having trouble p piecing together what the hell he just saw. Um, so, Captain, you're hanging outside of the room with your crew. Uh, Sloan is just looking through his notes on his, like, fucking thick iPad thing. Just like, where did I go wrong? This is supposed to work. And I'll, hey. I'll walk over to him and be like, I think you need to get laid. Oh, to Sloan? <laughs> Yeah, Sloan just, like, walks see, furiously out of the movie. room where you guys are. So you guys oh, are hanging out in the room. As he passes, Perhaps he needs Boulder of his own. Yes. Own Boulder. Do you guys want yeah, to say as... anything to each other? Yeah, as he passes me, I just say, get fucked, Sloan. <laughs> we all get to do, like, one of those 80s uh, high school things where everyone jumps up and does a high five. That's the ending credits. <laughs> what happens when a Gorn and a Boulder is a private between them alone? <laughs> uh, I thank my cousin for his timely aid. And I, tell, I look him in the eye and say, now we're even, cousin. Uh, you read it. Uh, don't ever ask me to do this again. This was fucking weird. Uh, you, you can't tell me. <laughs> Don't tell me you didn't have a good time, though. Oh, I had a great time. I'll fight you later. I'm not gonna <laughs> stick around. <laughs> he, he throws, <laughs> he throws a briefcase at the judge, and then everyone freeze frames <laughs> and laughs as freeze frame the song no. starts playing. Din, 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 din. Yeah, 
Uh, he's like, I'm not going to be able to stick around for the verdict. It turns out I have to go back to the home world. I wish you all the best of luck. You're definitely going to need it. Well, actually, not really. It sounds like you kicked that man's ass. Where did you get such a crappy human for a job like this? You think that he'd be somebody with that much experience would know how to do a trial properly? This was a kangaroo court. Clearly, you all have won this one. <laughs> and he walks what away. What the hell is a kangaroo? Yeah. Human animal. It's a land mammal that uh, beats people up. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Um, yes. Bargain Boulder here to give you a best discount on used starships the side of the quadrant. We got Connie's. We got Daedalus's. We got NX's. So many NX's. <laughs> we have so Aww. many NX's. Even Captain Archer flew one. And he died <laughs> with his beagle. <laughs> he became oh. murdered with his beagle. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, so, yeah, you guys are currently awaiting the verdict. Um, and uh, while you're doing that, one of the uh, crewmen that uh, just works in engineering came up, and he walks over to uh, Slar and Gakek while you guys are kind of just mingling together. He's like, uh, hey, Chief, uh, when did you order that weird wheelchair? Uh, He's talking to Gakek. Oh, Me? Yeah, uh, it's, I didn't even think that we can get a wheelchair that quickly. Greg uh, Heck ordered no such thing. Oh, don't believe Yeah, okay, sure. The, the medical yeah, officer aboard... was supposed to remain in traction until he recovered. Well, the, the medical officer aboard the station said you ordered him to directly be put into a wheelchair stasis. It was strange. I thought this kind of medical procedure was normal, but, you know, I don't know anything about... Uh, I would like to speak with this medical officer. Uh, uh, but the ship is ill-equipped. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, he's on the medical floor, although I don't know if you can kind of leave right now. Um, and then he looks over at Grekek, and he's just like, yeah, and, and, and by the way, why did you send uh, a lot of our cargo guys over on the Klingon ship? Uh, on the Klingon ship? Yeah, the, you just ordered, like, a whole bunch of them over there. It has your It has your fingerprint on it. Let me see that. Who has been forging Grekek's fingers? Uh, yes. Grekek's fingers are yeah, all yeah. accounted for. Okay, uh, it's that. almost. I'm almost done, Ryan. Um, so, uh, yeah, do me a favor, Ross. Give me an insight security. Um, and make that a complication range of one. Challenge dice two. Insight. What am I doing? <clears throat> insight, insight security. security. Yes. Complication range what? One. Challenge Ice 2? Yes. No fo Wait, are you doing this or am I doing yeah, this? Yeah, just at the die. No, uh, let's do it for Orion. Oh, Ascroll? Oh, Challenge. Yep. Hey, shit. I don't know what that means. Uh, it means you. It means that you have a special effect added, but that's only if you did something. Um, no. Yeah, it's definitely... You can't tell if there's anything been tampered with it, but that's definitely Grekek's big giant claw mark. Free, but I'm the security man. Racism. Um, do you want to do that same bad. exact role there? Uh, if you want to try to figure out who it was. Yeah, sure. Yeah, same role. Uh, that was Insight Security. Uh, challenge 1 uh, in and Challenge Dice 2. Sorry, oh, that was... Really, right? Security's never really been my thing. <laughs> I'm in, I dabble in the science. Uh, uh, can I use my focus because I have yes. security? Yes. Oh, shit. Yeah, uh, this was clearly forged. That looks like somebody drew that in, like, the Starfleet equivalent of Photoshop. It's the same thing on uh, the medical officer's log, actually. You can see the pixels right there. <laughs> so many pixels. There's so many pixels. And then just as you're saying that, the uh, Commodore opens the door. He's like, uh, Captain, uh, like to, we'd like to convene the rest of this in here. Uh, you all can wait out here. And so he brings the captain in. Uh, and it's just the Vulcan, Sloan, and the captain, and Daniels is in the corner. Uh, just sitting there like... You just left him? He's just sitting over there in the corner, <laughs> looking at you, captain. A little weird. Uh, you know, he's not able to move his head, but you can clearly see his eyes are following you. Um, and uh, that's when uh, Commodore Decker, not that one, uh, just looks over and he just goes, We're going to have to drop all the charges. I'm sure you probably expected that, but to be quite honest, we really needed this victory, and Sloan here was a little overzealous. All we ask is that you forget this whole thing. Condition. 
tell them we want medals. What is your condition? Everyone gets medals. Yes. The dartboard, the dartboard. And that's when the, the Vulcan is like, that is highly illogical. I don't see... And that's when Commodore Decker puts his hand up. It's like, we'll figure something out. Second. <sighs> and Commodore's like, this board. is your second and last condition. Dartboard. What? Dartboard. What's a dartboard? Sloan goes like, it's a bar game thing. Thirdly, I get to punch Sloan in the face once, medium hard. Fourth, we need Sloan to do is just like about the S's. Yeah, Sloan is just like he, he's just like. Well, you know what, Captain? We have the Warbird. You're lucky. You're lucky. You have friends in Starfleet still. I'm just gonna uh, say. That. I, I don't. Walk in, I'm I will be keeping your shit at your job. And then, uh, yeah, and that's when uh, you just start to hear uh, something very familiar. Uh, Oh no. Base station. And then that's when Commodore Decker is like, Com Ops, what was that? And uh, calling back down, uh, the guy's like, The Klingon ship seems to be powering up, sir. The one that's supposed to be derelict? Captain, what's going on? He's asking you, Captain Horatio. So that's what those fucking cargo techs did. He said, You know, if you hadn't wasted oh, your time here, I would have had this in. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like I'm needed. What are we going to do? We're not going to be able to take on a uh, Klingon bird of prey. And that's when you hear the sound from behind you. <laughs> Again. <laughs> from behind you, you just hear... And the uh, Daniel's chair opens up and he stands up and he's like, That's right. You're not going to be able to do anything about this. Can I punch Daniel's <laughs> right he's, in the he's, he, he's, he's like way across on the other side of the room and he's got a phaser pointed at you. Can I, can I nobody fast. Back? Nobody do anything fast here. I was hoping to see you go down, Captain, but turns out Sloan is an idiot. Can't do his True. job correctly. <sighs> so what are we going to have to do about the great Captain Horatio and his crew of dumbasses? Uh, well, I know. I'll finger. take his trophy prize, the Klingon Bird of Prey. I didn't really like Starfleet anyway. And that's when he walks over. Ship. Yeah, he walks over, gun still pointed at you, Captain, and he goes like, don't worry, I'm sure we'll see each other again. I'm not foolish enough to fire a phaser in here. You know how these security systems work. And that's when you see the transporter thing, like, form around him, and he's like... <laughs> Can I jump in there with him? <laughs> you throw the boulder in there, and it fuses... You got it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys... We're going in! <laughs> yeah, you guys bust into the room just as you see Daniels disappear, and uh, you just still hear the sound of... Uh, of ops like, sir, the Klingon bird of prey is going to warp. What should we do? And Commodore Decker looks, looks lost. He's just, like, yeah. What should we do? We wasted all this time on a trial. That was important, right? <laughs> <laughs> Commodore Decker is just like, just <sighs> let him go. We're not At in this a point. He looks uh, over at the captain. We're not in any place to fight them. The ship Campbell isn't exactly up the, the documents, although it's a little late. Found out where the cargo tax went. <laughs> Great work, Ross. Uh, I'd like to just point out that Sloan, identity has been stolen. I'd like to point out that Sloan has been working with a known conspirator. And Sloan just looks and like he's just like I had no idea any of this was happening. Highly doubtful. Uh, Do you uh, have proof? I'm gonna beat him now, and I'm gonna put a presence and command him to go fuck himself. <laughs> um, no, Sloane just kind of leaves the room with his hands up in the air, like he's just fucking no, done. No, he doesn't. Not without at least one. Hey, 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 hey. he can't. I just accused him. I'm citizen's arrest or whatever <laughs> I am. That's yeah. <laughs> do you want to try to? Do you want to try to convince the commodore to arrest him? No, yes, I will. I will do yeah. it all. Oh my god! Yes, let the Orion. Slow I want a full Chad moment. I'm gonna channel the Orions I never lived up to. Okay. Get him, boys! Uh, give, <laughs> give me a fitness <laughs> and security roll. Uh, this is going to be complication oh, no. range two. No, sorry, one, because he's, his back is turned. Challenge dice two. I want to punch him in the gut if he fails. Just tell him to get back here? Yeah. No, no, you're grabbing him to get back here. I was like, you get back here! Oh shit! Yes. You grab him and he's <laughs> and I he's actually him up over my head. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you get. Yeah, I'll let you do that. Yeah, you you throw him up over the head and he's like, "Put me down! What did I do?" Oh, you're the one that will be getting asked questions now. 
And that's when that's when Whatever. Commodore Decker, not that one, just goes, "Listen, I'm not going to tell you how to handle your crew here, Captain, but let me just remind you that assaulting an officer, even though he's an idiot, uh, is still a violation." Well, could you guys go outside real quick and not see anything? <laughs> they could... Can I backslide him on Boulder? Five minutes. That's all I want. Yeah, that Five Commodore Decker completely ignores you. Um. Cap Captain, could you Do please? Do not see. He's a criminal. Oh, we're going Boulder to take care of. Much. We'll take care of Sloan. Trust me. After the day, he's not going to be working any kind of internal affairs. At least if I because have to file. I have a request regarding Mr. Sloan. Sloan. And Sloan is just like hit, feet is kicking, and he's like trying to hit the back of the Orion, but he's like weak. You know. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. I would. Having lost a useless person like Mr. Daniels, I could use another crewman to do bitch jobs on my ship. The Commodore looks <laughs> uh, looks over at him and he's like, I'll file the paperwork tomorrow morning. And Sloan's like, you can't do this to me! You can't do this! I'm Sloan! <laughs> Internal <laughs> Affairs! <laughs> and he winks at uh, Ross and he goes, well, <laughs> Posey's in your wheelhouse now. <laughs> The the uh, Sloan, the Vulcan and, and the Vulcan just goes like uh, I apologize for the inconvenience and uh, and I hope that you will have a steady journey onto your next assignment. Uh, excuse uh, well, me. One last thing. Uh, he did just take a bird of prey. We're well aware of that. There's not much we can do about it though. This ship, this station is not equipped to uh, deal with combating any kind of uh, alien threats. And well, to be quite honest. The uh, the SS isn't exactly in great shape, but uh, don't worry, Captain. Uh, I'm I, I think it was designed in a bad shape. It's not phallic at all. I'm going to be submitting a report to Starfleet to see what your next orders will be. I'm not going to restrict you on this station. You're free to roam about wherever you like. Just try not to hurt anybody aboard my ship, would you? No promises. He just laughs. People and he cracks his knuckles again. He's like, all right, fucks, let's go. Yeah, everybody, like, walks out of the uh, courtroom. And so now you guys have all uh, completed the inquiry. Um, that was kind of off, obviously, off the top of my head for a lot of it. Um, but the other thing is that now that you guys have completed this, um, I'm going to give you guys all... Uh, I'm just going to say this on stream so everyone can know. Uh, you guys all get one... Arc token. One arc. Uh, sorry. One arc. Uh, what was it called? Ross. Remember milestone. If, if Sloan what acts the hell's up. an arc? So there are three different kinds of milestones. Um, normally on oh, missions. Worry, I got a plan. Yeah. Normally on missions, you guys would get spotlight milestones or normal milestones, which are like how you increase your character or change stats and things. And you'll have to change your focuses. And so let me know what you plan on changing those two. But with arc milestones are the most valuable because you actually increase your character's abilities. And what that means is that you can increase your attribute, uh, a single attribute by one, one discipline by one. Um, you can have one more additional talent, one additional focus, and one additional value. Um you can also increase uh, a ship's systems and uh, ship's disciplines, but that's we're not using any of that system right now. So uh, just basically you get one in your attributes and you get to pick which ones you want and also get a new focus and a new talent. So that's all for you guys. Um, so next time on the uh, the next Star Trek, uh, Captain, right now, yeah, uh, you're going to get a message down and it turns out you're getting a reassignment. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. It turns out that Starfleet was quite impressed with your ability to take on a Klingon bird of prey, but they decided that maybe it's time for the crew of the Essence to be given more responsibilities. I don't like that word. Responsibility. In your next mission, you all will be piloting the new Miranda-class starship, the one and only currently in Starfleet in this time. Uh, there are others being built, but you'll be flying the first, the USS Miranda. And your mission I, will be I to hunt. Miranda once. She rode well. Your mission. She your mission she will be her. to hunt down and uh, obtain uh, Daniels and the missing crew from the cargo ship of Essex. Cool. <laughs> You're like cool. <laughs> Should have killed Daniels. 
Uh, and uh, not only that, but you guys will also be sent on other side missions. Um, you all have reached the reputation of six, which, uh, which means... <laughs> Because there's a reputation range of 0 to 20. Uh, reputation range of 6 is actually better than what you had. You guys all had 3. Um, almost a pass. Yes. Almost. Uh, yeah, so you're basically your character's record is somewhat uncertain and their performance is questionable. They are viewed as being too quick to disregard Starfleet rules and regulations, occasionally insubordinate, and they have gained reputation as unnecessarily reckless. Which falls into very good... This, is, this describes you guys really well. Um, your goal in the next few games, if we have more games, um, is to try to get oh, to I at least, stopping. yeah, to at least get to reputation like ten or fifteen, which is just below like the Enterprise, if you can. Otherwise, it just goes down depending on how fucked up you guys become. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, so let's go ahead and do our uh, our outro here, really? and. Uh, yeah. We're gonna do what we're gonna do is the uh, non sequitur thing. So basically, it's like next time on Star Trek. Shut up and kiss me, Orion. Mm. Please, yes, the not the horn. <laughs> no, you cannot get out of the brig. What do you mean, diet tab? <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not want anchovies. I don't even know what those are. Captain, no, don't drink that. It's diet. Yes, Boulder. I do. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Boulder, how could you? What do you mean you're here for the uh, Starfleet's piece of the action? Oh, no. <laughs> Not <laughs> Wait a second. If that was the toilet, that means I just... Uh-oh. <laughs> Wait, Captain. If you're here, who just called? <laughs> Jumping Jehoshaphat, who let one? Sorry, Boulder, man. you do not have hey. facial hair. <laughs> when were you part of the SS Boulder? What? <laughs> Boulder with yeah, like a fucking goatee. <laughs> yes, exactly. A little, uh, sorry, SS hat and uniform. No! The evil Boulder. The captain. captain. Captain! Yeah, you guys are like having a fight on the bridge, but it's like two different stunt doubles. <laughs> They're both green. Oh, my, like, my credit rating! They also the stole my credit rating! <laughs> you can tell our main actors are fat and out of shape, like trying to get up like... Ugh, and it pants like the uh, stunt doubles fighting, and then... <laughs> and of course... Our new uh, lovely Sloan getting kicked into the reactor. No, he's being put in the brig, and I'm taping that button down that tortures people. <laughs> Ross, I told you I could put them together, but this is excessive. Slar's right, pushing around gonna... Orion in the uh, Daniel's wheelchair. Whee! Whee! Okay. <laughs> I'm um, on the beach with like two sexy ladies next to me. Like, oh yeah. So that's the and... that's the end of tonight's session. Um. We'll pick it back up whenever we get a chance to. Let you guys know when that happens. Um, I and, should be here next week, but I am on holiday all next week. Yeah, and that's fine. We'll, we'll figure back. it out. Because next week's a holiday, everybody, so yeah. things might be a little weird over here. Um, but yeah, uh, thanks for hanging out with us. Check out the BPL's new Christmas dump coming out every day, right? Yeah. Hell yeah. Got First it. two Room World episodes, you can hear Tex sing. This is a song about seven uh, yeah, times. I actually did sing. I actually Ooh. did say it. It's very good. Uh, and then after that, it'll be a couple Space Station 13, Park Attack, and a couple of other little surprises in there that we've been working on and putting together uh, in the background. So, uh, yeah, that'll be coming up on not the channel. Not good because I'm not in them yet, but they're, they're great. Go watch. That'd be cool. Um, and uh, I think tomorrow, I don't know for sure. I've talked to Nick about it, but we might be doing... KOTOR, not, not Nick, the Nereaser Nick, um, who's uh, going to come over tomorrow. We might do that tomorrow, but probably not. I don't know yet. The online, the MMO, or the... Uh... The regular game. Um, and then on Monday, it's back to, I guess, depending on like what, what everyone in my friend group is doing for the holidays, uh, back to the normal courtesy flush. We might do like a holiday thing. So That's what's happening with me. Uh, outside of that, Wait. anybody want to say anything before we go? Thanks for watching. Goodbye, have a good time! Bye. Play the outro. Yeah, alright. Yep, you guys have a good one, and uh, yeah. I will see you guys again.
Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We wish Christmas. you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. I'm going to bring it right now. Yeah. Up, vote, subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good night. Dollar shave plum. <laughs> Why? <laughs> anyway, you guys have a good night. We'll see you on the next Courtesy Flush. Take care. Thank you.